are mucus free. We 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 are mucus free. What's going on, brothers and sisters? And welcome to another episode of the Mucus Free Life Podcast. And I am Professor Spira, and we have a very special guest today. Maria Maza, Ma Manaza is going to be on to talk about her journey, her transformation, another one of the many beautiful transformation stories on this path of healing of physiological enlightenment, taking things to the next level, trying to return humanity back to some semblance of what we once were, what we're supposed to be, the, the levels of understanding health that we've lost. I mean, there's been such a huge key to our existence. There's all these theories out there about monkeys and evolutions and this and that, but we we lost we there's very few of us that can just sit and say okay we we lost it <laughs> we came up with a lot of weird concepts but what's what's actually the thing that's going to transform humanity if you believe that it's not supposed to be the way that it is if you believe that you look and see the news and folks murdering each other and raping each other and genocides and all of the insanity on this warlike planet, if you believe that that is not human nature, that that is the nature of sick beings, degenerate humans that have eaten their way down into these pathetic creature-like beings that go out and do these so-called evil things. If you, once you start to understand that, then you, you have something, you have something to hold on to a little peace that can at least be a jumping off point and a starting point because we're not saying we have every you know have it all together but there's definitely a key and a piece that we have that very few have and look at all throughout history it seems like this little piece is the missing link folks will come out with all of this really brilliant concepts and try to create these civilizations and governments and economies and go off and have communes and try to whether it be even folks that go and try to live on nothing but fruit you know we're talking thousands and thousands of years of humanity but there's a piece that has been missing all along for at least as long as the uh the kind of history we have access to we can't say at what point how far back it was together but uh, I think we can agree <laughs> that it is not, <laughs> we're not in, in, uh, in good condition right now that we have really, uh, gotten into some, some problems. So, uh, so before we get going, everybody go down below, click the like button and the subscribe button, you know, the drill, hit the share button, get this out to as many people as possible, because this is how we try to enlighten, try to expose people to this information. That was always my goal was to pay it forward, to do for others what somebody did for me, was willing to do for me, to just expose me to the information. You know, no, no one can practice this for you. Nobody can force you to go buy the fruit or the vegetables or to clean yourself up. But you have to at least be exposed to this information so that you have the option. You have the option to go down path A or go down B, and you know that there's another way. There's another way to live. There's another way to think about the human body, another way to think about what disease, why we suffer, human suffering in general. And so that's just always been 
what I'm trying to do, my goal is just expose people, give folks an option to say, if you no longer align yourself with the modern medical theories, you don't want to go down that road and ascribe to what has largely been, <laughs> been look at the statistics, a fairly failed system, regardless of how eloquent their emergency systems may be. If you're in, a, like we always say, if, if I, I, my arm gets cut off or I'm in a car accident, send me the emergency room. They're good at getting you stabilized. But once I'm stabilized, I'll be ho hobbling out of there because I detox myself, whatever they put in me. And, you know, they will we'll move on with life. But uh, but after that stabilization, it, it gets really, really bad. And so a lot of you know that and a lot of you been there. And so what we're trying to do is just expose folks to some other options that the this reality is not does, does not have to be as as dire and as sad and painful as it is uh cracked up to be as they want us to think that it is so without further ado let's bring on maria who herself at the age of 35 was faced with all kinds of ailments and pain medications for for things that she was going through and decided to go an alternate route and through her exploration she found mucus's diet healing system as well as various natural hygienic and natural healing modalities and has really made a study an analysis of of many of them and has some really good uh good concepts of these different modality so let's bring on maria what is going on how are you doing i'm good i can't complain it's sunny and i have my health that's it yeah you were saying you got got a little bit of sun today that's that's always a good day when we we have our breath <laughs> we have some sun <laughs> for yeah. sure and i just want to say i loved that intro i mean it just flows so well with you and it makes so much sense and it's logical and it's it's the truth. I mean, we are not designed to, we, well, I mean, we're just, we're not meant to be going down the road that humanity is going down, but it's just a result of toxicity and uh, toxic people do toxic things. Yeah. Yeah. Most, most definitely. That's, that's one, one thing that I would really, really like for human humans in general to have that realization if they don't have any other realizations just realize the connection between what you put in your body with the behavior answer so many questions that people have but uh yeah we, we got some some work to do to get that <laughs> that message out yeah. that don't really appreciate or enjoy that message but so uh so tell me what how did this all start for you talk a little bit about some of the things that you went through in terms of your health challenges and how you found this path? Um, well, it's quite the story. <laughs> um, so the pain in my body basically started at the age of six. I always had this pain in my left leg and it just, it kept me awake at night. It kind of ruined my childhood for a lack of a better term because I couldn't, you know, sleep, I'd, I'd find myself awake at night crying, I'd be hitting my leg, I'd just be so frustrated, and then I'd be kind of angry and cranky during the day. And not to mention that my diet, you know, I was drinking a lot of homogenized milk back then, which I do attribute a lot to the inflammation that I was experiencing. But little did I know back then, um, I was fortunate enough that I was raised by a single father, and he just didn't do doctors you know it wasn't something that we did we didn't go running to the dentist and we didn't go running to the doctor which is probably what saved my teeth and <laughs> saved my health because i would have been you know pumped full of other medications which have, would compile the issues and make things worse so fast forward into my 20s and i i was a typical 20 in the 20s you know drinking and eating crap and health issues were getting worse. I had acne all over my face. I couldn't sleep well. I started indulging in sleeping pills when I'd go out partying. I'd sometimes take a 
sleeping pill so I could wake up refreshed or so I thought was what refreshed was at that time. Um, I had various health issues, you know, just typical things like a bit of depression here and there, mood swings, acne, the pain in my legs persisted. But by the time I got into my 30s and to 35, that's when things got really bad. Like um, I had like an incident when I went on a trip in Italy where I couldn't even walk. Um, mm. or sorry, that one was at the farm. I was sitting on my couch and I went to get up and suddenly it's like my whole body seized or something and I couldn't get up for a while. I was just sitting there and it was like so scary. And when I finally could kind of get up, I was just shuffling around like I was, you know, in my eighties already mm. and I couldn't walk very well. And this went on for a couple of days and then a friend recommended a chiropractor and I kind of over the course of a week sort of got back to what I considered normal, but I was still dealing with so many issues. Like, um, it was it like inflammation in your joints or was it the nervous system or what was it that was really causing I you to not be able to walk? I think it was a bit of both. So it was around that time when I went to see a nerve specialist, actually, mm -hmm. I went to a doctor, I took myself to a doctor finally about this pain in my leg. Um, and that doctor referred me to a nerve specialist. And then the nerve specialist did all these tests and he said I had a dead nerve in my leg. So that was the diagnosis, which I've never heard anyone have. Mm. And uh, he said that I should get used to pain medication and I'll be on the pain medication to manage my symptoms for my entire life. And that's when everything just kind of came crashing down. I was like, I think I was like 34 when that happened. And, and then, uh, you know, I just realized I had to, I had to do something like, like it was crazy. Like, but at that time, what had occurred was I had left the city. I had moved to the country to operate a farm mm. because I started waking up and I wanted to know where all my food came from. So I thought, you know, if I, if I just had the raw milk and if I had the pasture raised eggs and the, and the dead animals that were from, animals eating grass at my farm, mm. I'd be okay. And I'd heal because that's what Western a price was saying in this book I was reading. And that's what I had believed back then. So I was getting the best <laughs> of the best. Um, all our farm was completely organic. It was seven acres. Um, you know, I was collecting the eggs myself, all this stuff. And my health issues were just getting worse. Uh oh, we might have a little technical glitch there. It looks like internet might have dropped for Maria. Hopefully, it it's it, it didn't drop for me. Let's see if uh, if it corrects itself here. But uh, yeah, this is a uh, another ama amazing transformation, and that that type of pain has become so normalized and let's see, looks like it's coming back in. I'm not sure if you can, if you can hear me, you might have to leave and come back in. If, uh, let's see, El said he can, can, can still see you. Yeah. Mariah's gone. Yeah. Yeah. See, uh, might have to leave and come back in. I'm not sure if you can hear me or not. A little technical glitch here. Let's see. So yeah, so that 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 fascinates me where they have really made that I mean, that that doctor said you probably have to take pain medication the rest of your life. When those of us that know that have been doing what we do, we know how relatively easy it is to heal yourself and to not have to be given a, a sentence. I mean, that's, 
I mean, that reminds me of the life sentence that they had gave me when I was 18 years old and they gave me a CPAP unit, which was oxygen mask for at nighttime, say, because they're saying I wasn't getting enough oxygen. And uh, they said, oh, for the rest of your life, you're going to have to you're going to have to do, use that. I'm so, back. All right. You're back. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what happened there. Yeah, a little little internet internet glitch. Yeah. <laughs> so, so you were talking about the the farm, the uh, yeah. yeah the farm. You had all the good the good stuff, and I got a I got a picture. There's not a lot of before and after pictures of you. <laughs> we found this one. I don't know if you sent this or if my team found it. <laughs> but. I I sent it, but that's you know like the before. I mean, you could see I, I did have weight issues and I was full of mucus um, and, you know, and e even after, though, I, I didn't know that I would be documenting my journey eventually or that this mm -hmm. was a thing. So I, sh I just didn't have a lot going on with right back then. Yeah, well, that's that's similar. I like I wish that I would have had more pictures when I was actually over 300 pounds because because I say that, but there's I only got a couple pictures where I really look that bad because I <laughs> consciously stopped taking pictures. Like I, I, I went through a, for a whole year, freshman year of college. I didn't even look in the mirror. Yeah. I just, I just, I just avoided looking at myself in the mirror and I just sort of just let my body go. And, um, but, uh, but yeah, so that's, that's one of those things we, <laughs> we, we sometimes look back, like, man, I wish I had some more, more of those pictures. Yeah. But, uh, now, what what age are you probably in this on the left? Um, I would probably say about twenty five, and then the other one would have been, well, I guess right at the beginning of the journey. So probably they're probably ten years apart. That's a thing. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. like, but when when I that those were other symptoms I had. I mean, I I'm now at a stable weight. It doesn't fluctuate whether I fast. I, eat a lot I eat whichever because I'm just at my natural body weight but back then I was uh I was about 25 pounds overweight 30 pounds for sure um I held it all right but I mean yeah I didn't I didn't have the the crazy weight transformation that you had but but uh definitely still any excess weight is a burden and yeah and you probably went through uh the uh you you know the, the 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 toxic makeups and the toxic did you did you use all the standard stuff back then yeah i used to have to wear makeup because i had acne that was so bad like i don't wear any makeup on my skin now ever like um but yeah the acne was really bad and and just uh dry skin all the time dry scalp like just all the issues that, you know, human man's created all these products as compensation for all our health issues is what I always say, because like we've got deodorant because we stink, right? I used to use that. <laughs> uh, we've got all the, the face makeup to cover up our, our skin because it's not looking so good because our diets <laughs> are horrible. Right. Skin's eliminating. We've got like all these products are created as compensation for our poor dietary habits. The two toothpaste like the whitening all the so right the glasses um just everything but yes so back to the the farm what what happened was i had all the best of the best the raw milk and i had the pasture-raised eggs and the the special meat dead animal and my health issues just kept getting worse i wasn't getting better i wasn't my health wasn't improving and it was supposed to be improving and i couldn't understand why and uh like you said in your intro that the reason why you do this is because you want to pay it forward because you know somebody was uh somebody was like nice enough like to take their time and to share this information so you could find it well that's what happened with me i went to a seed exchange in uh penticton bc and i was selling my seeds from the farm and this woman came up and she just kind of like she wasn't saying a lot, but she was just saying, you know, that you're sick and that you, you have a lot of candida in your body. And she recommended a book and she said, you got to go read it. And so right after the seed exchange, I took that as a sign and I went and I picked it up. It was the Dr. Robert Young book, which I mean, I don't promote a lot because I don't 
fully agree with everything in there, but it did point out to the fact that meat and animal products and dairy was not health promoting. And that's the first time I had ever read anything to the contrary, because I was listening to this Western A price and I thought that I was doing the right thing. And, and so when I read this book and then it later led me to Arnold Errett's book because of the actions I took as a result of that book. So basically I, I eliminated everything overnight. I was like, I'm done. No more eggs, no more meat, no more milk. I'm done. And I was living on a farm. We were selling milk. We were selling mm -hmm. meat. Yeah. And so yeah, we just like stopped. And then, and then I was like, well, I'm not going to eat it and use it myself. So I can't do that to other people. That would just be hypocritical and messed up. Right. So, like my freezer full of meat. I just gave to the neighbor cause he wanted it and like started finding good homes for all our animals. And where they hopefully wouldn't be eaten. They said they wouldn't eat them, but who knows? <laughs> um, <laughs> right. <laughs> I tried. I really did. Yeah. Try. Yeah. Yeah. We, we won't eat your, yeah. Give us the chickens. We won't eat them. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, well, I did find some, some like some sanctuary type places where people were actually quite, you know, they, they seemed like they're doing the best they could for the ducks and everything. So, yeah. And then that just began the journey. So, um, got rid of the farm, left the farm, moved to a friend's place, which was like 20 minutes away. And they had a, a fruit orchard mm. and moved into my trailer, tiny home on this fruit orchard and started growing food for the big house there, um, gardening and, and managing the fruit orchard. And then in that trailer, I was cleansing and and detoxifying and just transitioning. And that was the beginning. And well, and that's where I found Arnold Errett's information at that place up in a friend's loft there. And I found it. And so that's where like it all began. And I was basically like living off grid doing all this cleansing. So back then, you know, I was doing enemas in the trailer, like this yeah. tiny little bathroom. And I was like, just eating my steamed veggies and my greens and my fruits and my baked banana surprise, <laughs> things like that. And things just gradually got better and better, you know, before they got worse, then better. Mm. But mm. you know how yeah. it goes like this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So that's that's interesting. So you were uh basically I guess still farming or or just but gardening <laughs> sort of a uh, you, so you were uh, helping to garden for the folks that had the that owned the property. Yeah, so they had a big house there, and it was twelve acres with a little lake. Mm. And they let us set up our our place there. And uh, I'm gonna have to turn on the light in a second. And then um, I just like started a garden there, and you know, for for the rent because they wouldn't take any rent, but they did want us to provide some food and to prune their fruit trees and to just kind of manage the orchard. So I was there for a couple of years and uh, that's, you know, where I did my first fast water fast. That's where I, uh, where it all began really. I mean, <laughs> after the farm, it was like one extreme to the other in a sense, but. Um, now, did did you ever have any, were, were you ever nervous about the, the change of, you know, where's the money going to come from and all this kind of stuff? Or were you just like, I'm just going to go with the flow and just, I'm going to follow this path wherever it goes and let the world take care of me. Yeah, it was like that. But see on the farm, I mean, we were doing all the animal products, but I was also still gardening there, growing squash, selling seeds. So all that came with me over there. So I was still mm. doing farmer's markets and nice. I was still like selling my seeds online and so I had a bit of a income going on and okay. so it was enough to sustain myself. I also had two kids, so two young boys to look after. Um, so that was a challenge because they were young and then I was getting rid of all the garbage in my system mm. slowly, periodically. So there's just so many ups and downs and, and uh, you really got to take time off life. And that's sort of what I did in a sense. Like I, I didn't, I didn't go out. I didn't socialize much. I just kind of cleansed and, and got into it and really learned it because you have to know it so deeply. You have to know the information because that's the only way 
you're going to see through the tough times because as soon as the tough times arise people just they end it they're like oh the the food's bad it's i, I gotta go back to eating meat because i don't feel good and it's like you need to understand what's going on right and, uh, you need to know it like you know it inside and out you and you understand what i'm saying because so many people go back you know they're ex-vegans or whatever yeah yeah and it's just because they don't understand what's happening if you know what's happening you'll know what to do but if right. you don't know what's happening it's gonna freak you out and and so i never got deterred and i went through a lot of tough times um but i kept the faith and now i'm, I'm so glad i did <laughs> yeah how how old was your your children you um, i guess four and six or th three and three and five i think yeah now did they did you put so kind of put them on the transition or, or <laughs> at, ever at the same time or did you kind of leave that like well i'm i'm going on this journey and and i'm learning and you know how, how did you deal with that um i i didn't worry about it too much i definitely took them off of all animal products and everything because i wasn't having that in the house anymore right um, so they definitely went plant-based and then you know because of what i learned i was i was trying to keep them off the bread just trying to keep them you know more and i mean my son today he's one of them is uh, 11 and every night he eats a salad with his steamed vegetables that's what he starts with and he still does you know the have a bit of pasta or some potatoes but their diets are very simple still and i keep telling them because they do understand this information i keep saying you know well one day you know if uh, too much mucus builds up in your body from the bread you're gonna know what to do at least I yeah was like, but right. it can be a lot easier now if you just do it now but you know i don't <laughs> force it on them either because i i did try that a bit and it backfired so i try and keep relaxed about it you know, they eat fruit, they have their fruit, they have their greens and yeah, they don't, they don't eat like processed crap too much, you know? So, and if they go to like birthday parties, I'll, I'll make some three ingredient peanut butter cookies or something, which I know isn't great, but you know, they, you should see what's out there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, and you know me, I'm, I'm, I'm like not, you know, I'm, I'm, in term it's it's like i have a different idea about where to be hardcore at so yeah. for me i'm in terms of the transition and understanding the permissibility of using things it, it's, it's like as long as you know this isn't something you're eating forever and you do see that you're getting to points where physically you can no longer eat certain things that you used to then you, you you're doing okay you know you're moving forward and uh because to me that's such a big piece that the folks that you were mentioning before oftentimes that you know that are really like i'm a hundred percent fruit raw this and that you know <laughs> and then they a few years later you're seeing they're doing whatever they're doing or hanging out at burger king again or carnivore <laughs> things or whatever and generally you know not maybe in every case but generally it's uh to, it's a transition issue where they they got they wanted to try to be so perfect so early that they they just didn't give themselves the latitude to explore the different foods including the mucus forming transitional foods they could help them keep moving forward and uh so yeah so you know no no judgment for me because it's yeah. this is a, this transition is is a real is a real thing and it and it takes that kind of time where and that's good to hear that it's 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 simple you know they're mostly simple and uh and they know what to do so yeah they'll go and get strung go get some candy bars or whatever and then yeah. but then they don't feel good then they know what to do it's like all right let's let's get back they, here so that's uh yeah they've never had like uh that's one thing like even halloween they don't eat Halloween candy and, and I've pointed this out to them. I'm like, just watch all the other kids. I was like, watch Halloween. And I was like, this is gonna be crazy. I was like, watch the behavioral changes mm. and all this. And and they do, they they noticed it. Like they they actually they they actually like will tell me like that they've noticed like yeah, it's just it's so amazing. Like 
and so they've never actually had candy or any processed food. I mean, I've I made them treats with dates and you know and carob and you know these like treats that are healthy, but they've never had any desire, and I guess they've never had a taste for it. I mean, I used to be addicted to chocolate bars when I was in my twenties, but <laughs> they uh, fortunately. Hello. Uh oh, we dry. You dropped uh -oh. again. We dry. You dropped again. Yeah. Well, I don't see your screen or my screen, but it says yeah, I'm still it's, connected. Yeah. It's, and then now there's a little. And then echo. now there's a little echo. I can, I can hear myself. I can, back I can hear myself end. back on your end. Which is weird. Hmm. You might have weird. to. You might have to come back in. Come back in. Okay, I'll do that. Okay. Okay. yeah yeah transition 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 like i said for me i like to put the intensity on on the mind part in terms of if i'm be hardcore about something hardcore about working through the theoretical frameworks or being challenged on different different ideas Let's see there you go you're back back <laughs> Yeah. So now is this found the Oh that's cute. That's not my baby. Oh, okay. That's a <laughs> I was looking for I did I was looking for if you had any of your unless you, you keep your kids off of social media like nah, they're not uh, oh, putting yeah. them on here. No, I've never put them on social media ever. That's actually my sister's kid, but I thought that was a cute yeah, well, it is super cute, yeah, and that that's your book. We're gonna talk about your book in a little bit. Nice. But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I I try and keep a balance between the social media life and real life, and you know. So. Yeah. 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 Gotta gotta do that. So uh, okay, so you got the, you you know you had your your couple years in the trailer, <laughs> hardcore transition period. <laughs> That's the, that transformation period. Is that when you lost some weight uh, in that, those couple years? Yeah. Yeah. I definitely lost a lot of waste in those mm. couple years. Um, and then things kind of fell through with the household there. Um, they actually kind of started rejecting me mm. because, and I wasn't preaching my way or anything, but you know how it is when you, when you're eating very healthy and then the people who aren't, they're questioning their, their habits and you're like a reflection to them and they don't right. like seeing you because, oh, there's a girl who's not eating meat and here they are eating meat. So it started being a little awkward because they'd invite me for dinner at the house and I'd be like, oh, I'm good. And I was just the hippie girl living over there and right, they kind of right. wanted more like of a friendship that wasn't really developing. So. I ended up moving off grid, um, getting a little property, like even farther, like out in the boonies and living off grid for a couple of years and mm. kind of uh, really then uh, getting into it down there. Yeah. <laughs> same, same sort of scene, farmers markets and everything, but really harsh. You had to, to kind of start, start over again in terms of your gardens and stuff? In terms of your gardens? Yeah, it seems like it. Uh -oh. We're cutting out it again. Uh oh, yeah, it did it that thing it. again. Yeah, it did that thing again. Uh, maybe I should try the laptop. I don't know. Yeah, if it's yeah, my if you, phone yeah, yeah, yeah. If you, yeah, it might be. Yeah, it might be. It's not stable. It's not stable to enough to keep it. But yeah, if you want to, yeah, if you want to fire up the laptop, yeah, I'll, I'll laptop try that. Cool. So I guess you'll have to work your magic and talk about your amazing. <laughs> insights and I'll be back all right all right all right so we're gonna <laughs> got our technical technical challenge and uh yeah Maria will be back shortly I'm gonna fire up the, the laptop and have a little technical issue with the phone but uh, yeah yeah trans transition we've been getting into some really interesting stuff in the, uh, the book club and mucus free social and if you haven't heard about that 
then you definitely want to sign up for the free training. If you haven't, I'm going to do a live free training coming up next Tuesday. And uh, so this is your chance. If you want to ask me questions at the end, there's a big Q and a session Q and a slash coaching session where uh, you can ask me all your questions. And uh, it's, I just, I enjoy doing it. It's been a while since I've done some live training. So I'm uh, looking forward to that. So I just put a link for that in the chat. So definitely sign up for that to take advantage of the opportunity to come connect with me and other members of the community. We're going to have a lot of fun as we always do in these sessions. So, all right, let's see. Uh, there we go. Let's see. Uh, can you hear? Oh, you got to put the, she got to put the, probably the headphones in potentially. I'm doing what I can. I don't have headphones. Can you okay. hear me? Yeah. Yeah. I can hear you. I'm just seeing if I can get this little light going too. I don't know. Yeah. There. Okay. Is right. how's that? That's good. <laughs> that works. Sweet. Yeah. So now, so we're at the part you moved to off the grid. So you got your own piece of property. And I was asking if you had to start over again with your garden on the new uh, property. Yeah. Where you again, just... greenhouse garden. I've started over again with greenhouse garden, planting fruit trees so many times. I can't even tell you. It's like, and every place I move, including that farm, as soon as I plant fruit trees, I'll end up leaving about two, three years afterwards, right when they start producing fruit and I never get to experience the fruit. But one lady did point out that that's my calling and my mission in life is to go around planting trees because I've, I can and I'm good at it. And, um, and I just, you know, then they're there for other people to enjoy because I can always find fruit local fruit anywhere I go. So it's like, I'm not lacking, but so where I'm at right now, I've just, I'm putting up another greenhouse. I've just planted nine trees to a year and a half ago, two years ago, and uh, they should be producing soon. And I imagine I'll be moving soon. <laughs> mm. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's, that's interesting. And I noticed, so you don't, uh, cause, hey, cause that's real interesting. And I don't see you. So you don't do too much, uh, content or pictures and stuff of your gardens and your um I do in the spring and summer but it's just kind of like on the stories and then like I'll do some posts but yeah I guess I don't I don't focus on it enough but I am planning to this year because um my father who lives on the same property as I do um he he lives in his trailer be on the property and uh I live in the house and we're putting up a dome big dome greenhouse this year like mm. so I'm really excited about that and I'm going to be showing pictures of that because I'm going to plant my fig tree that's growing in my house right now I'm going to plant that in the dome and uh, it's going to be an amazing place amazing that's cool are you going to do is it just a kind of a, a dome greenhouse or do you do some of that where you dig into the ground to get the the heat coming from the from deep in the I know I've, I've seen things coming out of Idaho and Utah where they're, they're digging into the ground and then have these things where they're, they're growing citrus up in the snow and stuff. I know I've seen that too. Um, and I want it to be an underground, but I don't think it's going to be, it may be down a little bit, but mm -hmm. I mean, it's just going to be above ground, but well, I think I'm these, these are, they're, they're above ground. But they do something. I don't know what it's called, but they, they do something yeah. where they dig. They dig real deep, and so they get, bring the heat from uh, whatever you got, like fifty feet deep or whatever, and they bring that heat up to the surface, and then have it enclosed. And yeah, uh, I, I know what you're talking about, mm. and it's it's amazing. And yeah, I will be utilizing. Like I'll definitely be digging in there, and also I, I'm really big with mulching and and uh, layering and and you know growing things in cold climates that most people can't because if you mm. learn how to keep the roots warm and then you're golden so mm. yeah 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 that's well, that is cool so yeah. uh so you kept going with your, your your transition so what's what's the next big thing like what's what's uh, the next well i mean 
I went through a lot of different uh, information and testing out, you know, different things on myself, like doing juice cleanses and doing, you know, maybe a smooth all fruit for a year. And then I pulled back to mucusless again. And then, you know, I, I experimented a lot over the years um, and, you know, always fell back to the transition diet because i mean that's just the most logical and gentle on the body and and uh so continued to move around a lot i think i moved another three or four times before i arrived where i am now um and where i am today is like you know most like i'm raw but if i ever do need something else i fall back to the transitional type foods so like starchless steamed veggies or baked veggies things like that but basically my diet's so simple now things have balanced out um it took a long time to get here but you know i, I just i eat enough till i'm comfortably satisfied i eat a large fruit meal every day um usually I get hungry around noon or so I make sure to stay hydrated um and then for dinner, you know, I, I always have my big leafy green salad and it's satisfying, you know, there's, I, I try and keep the fats low because I do notice Eric was right about that. The fats really uh, do a number on us. Like if I overdo the fats, I, I notice um, in my skin, my hair, everything I can, I can tell and I can mm. pull back, right? Because the body responds so quickly the cleaner we become. I mean, a lot of people see that as a negative and they'll think, oh, wh why do you get so like affected by an air freshener? Oh, look at you. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. And I'm like, cause that thing's really like toxic and it's affecting me because like my body's clean enough to recognize it as a poison and they think it's a weakness. They, they, they uh, mistake your strengths as weaknesses, right? But right. Yeah, I don't know where I was going with that. I see you got some pictures of some of the foods that I've posted over the years. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out to the, to the team, <laughs> to yeah. my research and development team. They always give me some go good to good stuff. Uh, Where was this at? No, that, that wasn't my great. Or, or, okay. <laughs> you <laughs> just posted that up. I was like, wait I a wish. minute. Yeah. <laughs> that, it was just that a is dream. gorgeous. Yeah. Gorgeous. But those were mine. Um, a friend's property, a farm I was living on, and he had these Nimrod grapes. And so, yeah, just it could, in the summer, in the spring here, I've got the best local organic healthy fruit. And then the winter, I'm just like everybody else. It's a struggle. And, you know, I got to go to the grocery store a lot. And I'm just like, yeah, it's not easy. You go into my freezer. Right. But yeah, I'm a big believer in eating the fruit whole, you know, like I do love my banana ice cream and I love the odd smoothie or the odd juice, but I'm not so much into that anymore. I'm more into just eating the fruit whole in its natural form. Um, I do believe that's, you know, the, the healthiest for us if we can get that. But of course, in the winter, I'm, I'm getting into my freezer and I've got some frozen local organic fruits and things, but. We do the best we yeah. can. It's still. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I just, I look at all that as, as part of the transition and, and I, and I, <laughs> I need to address this. Uh, LL said, uh, gotta be careful using the word transition these days. People think you want to cut off bits and of your body. <laughs> so I, right, so I'm, I'm, I'm putting my foot down on that because I've been, we've been using the word transition for our purposes <laughs> for, you know, well, in the mucus of diet for, you know, over a hundred years, but I, I've been using it quite a lot. I'm on the record for 21 years. So yeah. they're, they're not taking that word from us. That's our word. Well, they, did, <laughs> yeah. they did take the word, you know, gay as well. And it used to mean happy, it used to be a happy word. Like, so the language gets changed over time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think yeah, transition they're, they're... belongs to to where it belongs, and that's here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm not letting them. They can't. They can't have that <laughs> to no. themselves. Is you know, 
It's too too good of a word. Eric said raw food diet is still believing in the nutrition theory of food and not the cleansing properties. Can you understand it now? There's some interesting questions on here. Yeah, so I think what you know what Deborah's talking about, you know, so yeah, so Eric. And he he challenges all of the that that we call it the additive principle, this idea that you you have to get certain you know nutrients and calories and vitamins and, and that whole line yeah. of thinking, and it's a paradigmatic shift in the direction of viewing the body from the perspective of elimination, where you're looking at the eating process as an elimination process the breathing process as an elimination process it's helping you eliminate and cleanse the body so every time you eat something you're cleansing and eliminating every time you breathe you're cleansing your blood if you are not toxic and that becomes the problem where you know Eric says that the, the constipation is the root of all ailments and in disease in the in the human and so uh so he makes the point when he he's you know he's talking about raw food and raw food ism that in some of what he was talking about carried over to today in terms of it's kind of what i was talking about earlier a, a certain type of fanaticism where somebody starts to view cooked food is is just absolutely evil yeah N never that you know where because you talk to some raw food is they will equate any cooked food as bad as meat <laughs> you yeah. know meat and dairy they'll just put it all in the same you know like oh yeah cooked food you know like 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 meat and the and and whatever vegetable you know cook vegetable like they just put it all together and you know all that's a create a certain fanaticism equal. yeah like it's it's there's a far big difference between some baked zucchini squash and anything else loaded with salt and oil you know like i mean i i took quite a long time to allow myself to transition properly to the point where all i really wanted was raw food i never pushed it i always right. knew eventually i'd probably you know get into raw but i didn't push it and so like it was like seven years straight of um just you know having the steamed veggies and the salads and everything before naturally i stopped really wanting to cook food like the odd time i'll still have some though and i never feel bad about it i mean it's, yeah it's not, just part of yeah it's like, not a big deal <laughs> yeah it's not a big deal like I'm glad I didn't find, you know, the raw food diet information first because Eret's information really gave me such a solid background or, or, you know, foundation to always under like towards understanding and to always fall back onto and, and to teach to others because no matter what, I mean, you need to start with a transition diet. Nobody can just jump into raw foods or they're going to fail and it's not going to work out but a lot of people do that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, agreed. We, we, we see this time and time again where, because even if, if it's j just having that attitude of, cause you know, we all go, you know, I go long periods of time raw and I just never thought about it cause I practice in the mucus diet. So that wasn't, it's like, yeah, mo I'm mostly, mostly raw. <laughs> yeah, that's true. But I, but I don't, that's Call not, yourself. Yeah, like that's not yeah. my perspective. Like I get along with, with got a, all kinds of friends that that's the perspective they're coming from. But uh, I just found that the, the mucus's diet healing system mindset just really was so dynamic and spanned because yeah. you can because all of those extremes are within the practice of the mucus's diet if you it but but only if you're if you get there if you so on in the same diet you can be you know on the one extreme 
cottage cheese and and applesauce. I don't I don't promote it, but I can't say I didn't do it personally. You know, I did it for a couple months, not long. Uh, Fred Hirsch did it. Oh, you know, his whole life until he, you know, until he was 95 and he passed away. He, you know, he, the way he practiced. But, uh, so you have that where that is permissible as, as a part of, of a transition. Again, I'll promote it. Most people don't have to use it, uh, that get into their transition, but it, it, it shows you what is available if you need that physiologically, if you're really having trouble and, it then now you get into the mechanics where it's better to eat that than it is to go and eat. I mean, I'd probably <laughs> I'd almost rather see somebody have some cottage cheese or something or some yogurt. Now they got vegan versions of all that stuff, but back in the day they didn't. But the reason that that was recommended in the first place was because it, it eliminated better than other pus forming foods where it was just the way that it eliminated. And so it was like, well, this is better than that. And, I, and like I said, I'd rather see somebody eat some of that than this impossible, impossible burgers and all this kind of stuff you know, that's the, going on. It's like the processed stuff, because that's what really messes with the body is, you know, these processed burgers can have an upward of like 25 ingredients. And it's like, that's a confusion program for your digestive. I mean, somebody who's just eating like one or two ingredient foods, even if it is mucus forming, it's going to digest and assimilate a lot better than if you're eating this processed stuff that the body doesn't recognize. Right. Yeah. But that, that stuff really does a number on people, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. Cause folks get real, real stuck. Uh, so yeah, that's where years ago, and I don't know if you ran into this, but there was a period where I was trying to, I was outreaching to different communities and I would try to go and communicate with vegan community and boy, they didn't like me. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, it's tough to connect because vegans more of an ethical stance and right. then they don't give a crap about themselves half the time. And then, so it's sort of like this disconnect where, you know, if everybody just kind of realized that if they took care of themselves, the animals wouldn't get hurt or abused by default, it would be a happier planet. But it's not working out that way. It's like, but then what good are you going to be to the animals if you're eating all this processed vegan crap and then you get really sick and unhealthy? What kind of example are you setting? Do people want to go vegan if they see a very unhealthy vegan? No. Right. Like, we got to set these examples of health for people to entice people to take the route to heal and cleanse our bodies but yeah and it's <laughs> yeah that that's uh, one of those those frustrating things because and i used to make try to make the argument or i'd have those debates with some of the vegan folks because they'll be like hardcore on the ethical and i'm like look i'm 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 on board i'm with you but if it wasn't for the transition diet i wouldn't be with you because right? i wouldn't have got there because i was yeah. As a lot of people, as I, I look at, we're all on the spectrum of, you know, sociopathy and psychopathy. You know, we're all a little sociopathic just to exist in this world. And uh, so you you could have showed me all of the suffering in the plant. I didn't. I, it was I was too like psychopathic to feel that. Like you weren't gonna. Yeah. I was one of the people. Like I would have killed the animal myself. Like I didn't have that connection until I cleaned myself up for six months and that's when it happened it was six months into really cleaning myself up seriously and i did a fast and 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 specifically during that fast i was like let me go watch some slaughterhouse video and uh because i knew that i was in the right place where if i see it now this might change like i didn't know for sure but i figured hey, this might change something and it totally transformed my whole way that I saw, cause like I'm sitting there crying, <laughs> just watching. Yeah. That's the old, uh, that the, it's the, the old classic PETA called meat called meet your meat. And, uh, as I had to download it off of a torrent site or something, cause this was like 2002 or so, you know, and, uh, and, and that, that did it, but it, that, but if I'd have seen it six months earlier, I wouldn't have. And so that's a, a thing that, you know, because, yeah, you, you'll reach some people. There's some people that are empathetic enough that you can reach them 
with the ethical argument. And that's cool. So keep doing it as far as you know, keep making that argument. But uh, but you also got to understand that there's a lot of people. They're not going to you're not going to reach them with that. You're going to have to reach them with some kind of self-interest, which is when they're in pain as you were or they find themselves in front of a doctor giving them some kind of terminal diagnosis or saying they're going to have to take pills for the rest of their life. Now they're a little bit more open to hear what other people have to say, to hear some alternative opinions. And, uh, and that's when you go in there and get them and then, yeah. you know, then let the, let the transition do the rest because it's gonna, it, it takes care of all of that. It really, it really does in terms of the transformation of the mind and, the value system and the body and that whole thing. Yeah, I agree. And and there's so many different approaches. I mean, and as long as, you know, people, the right people will find the approach that works for them. Some, some people do have a lot of success just doing it for the animals. And then I have seen people that have, you know, started out junk food vegan, did it just for the animals. And then they, they did transition over to healthier diets and, uh, you know, get more, more into their health and so it doesn't always backfire and <laughs> but there's a lot of different mindsets out there and when they're so rigid you know then it, it just it just gets too crazy it's like and so i mean even with with our support group you know it's natural hygiene based it's based on natural hygienic principles but we teach the transition diet first and foremost we know that it's you know not not in anyone's best interest to just jump into all raw you gotta transition and and so like everything is like about transitional uh ways and and of doing things and it's so important so yeah back to the transition I'm just gonna yeah. grab yeah. something to sit on here quickly okay. i want to be up a bit higher <laughs> okay okay and i don't know if the yeah someone was saying your audio was a little low i don't know I know you're just talking into the mic probably on your system. you know what i i do have a microphone i'll just go grab right. that so while you're doing that i will oh, okay that's a nice it's been a long time time since i've used it i never thought i really needed it but i guess i do tonight yeah um Let's see if uh Cause either because it doesn't because to me it doesn't sound that uh it doesn't doesn't sound that low but but yeah let's uh let's see when you get that going there somebody asked if you've read the world peace diet that's kind of funny because i'm actually listening to that on audiobook right now and it's got a lot of the same sort of concepts there you know just basically yeah. that this world will become a better place the healthier we become but yeah, yeah, I've looked at it years ago because he he was making his rounds. I mean, we're talking like 2005, 2006, I think, you know, if I remember, you know, around that era when I was getting real deep into the diet, he was he was quite popular going around to vegan vegan events and where he was speaking and talking about his book and everything. And so I kind of got exposed to him then and uh yeah, so I never got real deep into his work, but I did go through that book uh, some years ago. Yeah, I, unfortunately, this uh, microphone isn't adapt doesn't have the right adapter yeah. for this. Computer. I think you're if yeah if you're just a little close like where you're at now, you should be good. You're just yeah, just I'll just closer. talk a bit louder and a bit closer, and we'll be good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, so yeah, so let's so what yeah so what's the any any other big you know, b big milestones on your, your, your transition after the, the, the second garden or third garden. Um, big milestones. Well, I mean, just so many ups and downs. And, you know, I, I will say that what I notice is that the more imbalanced we are in our body, like the better we treat ourselves and the healthier we become, the more, balanced and everything outside of us becomes and I can notice it like if I say I overdo the fats one night or if you know if I'm like if I overate if I didn't treat myself as well as I should have I can notice like now my balance is a bit off 
or I feel like like just things are off, um, I'm clumsy, things won't fall into place. Like it's really interesting um, when you really get to a level of cleanliness in the body where like it's like night and day from where I came from. But I just wish I had documented it a lot more closely than I did. Um, I did spend a lot of time just sort of uh, to myself and not really sharing with the world because I mean, I did go through a lot of dark times. I'm not going to lie. Like I had a lot of emotional detoxification uh, uh, spells, I guess you could say, or, or times, you know, where I would just kind of go into myself and, and a lot of like, you know, dark stuff was coming out and, you always feel better afterwards but as you're going through it it can be you know a tough time so but i mean other than you know life's been pretty steady i've just stayed the course i've i've known since the day i read arnold Eret's work that this was my life's work and that i was going to work towards it no matter what and so i mean of course we all have our ups and downs but um, as long as you understand what's happening, then you know what to do. And I've always instinctively known what to do because I learned, I learned the, the truth, um, about it. So, yeah. 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 I always felt that on, it's like you, ha you have some lows, but they're, they're nowhere near the lows and even just the regular days on the old <laughs> lifestyle. Yeah. Yeah. where you know you, oh. you just get so used to feeling good that you know when you do go hit a bump in the road or you're going through we just say going through elimination uh then it is you know it's like oh man or you know or like you said that things you get used to things linking up the way it should be or feeling good because I, I would always i start going real long periods with no you know, no stomach issues, no nothing. Then I go and eat something that I shouldn't eat or, or overeat something. And then all of a sudden here comes that, that little bit of, of, yeah. uh, of acid in my throat. I'm like, oh man, I yeah. haven't even felt, I haven't felt that in years. This is ridiculous. I need to not do this anymore. But it <laughs> and, serves uh, as a good reminder and it actually keeps you on track because yeah. you know, the, the few times that I have, like, you know, even if I go to a restaurant, I'll order two salads and then I'll get the dressing on the side and then I'll use like just the tiniest bit of it because I, I want a little bit of taste, but I want to use their oily dressing and I'll feel that the next day. And it just serves as such a reminder. It's like that stuff in the outer world is toxic. Like, yeah. Yeah. Like all of it. <laughs> it's all like of they, it. Yeah. Even yeah. the so-called healthy stuff. I mean, I have to remind them. I'm like, can I get two garden salads on one plate no salt or oil, please. Just don't put anything on it. <laughs> just just yeah, fill the yeah. stuff. Because um, if you don't, they're always putting salt or something. And I mean, it's very rare that I'll even step foot in a restaurant. But the odd time, it's never a good experience. And I'm only ordering salads. <laughs> it's like yeah. And then yeah, and, you, and then you never know what the the, the quality of the, the lettuce has been dipped yeah. in whatever tuck chemicals that they dip that stuff in and and uh yeah that's yeah it's a whole nother thing too holy I, yeah. I live rural like very rural like when i sleep at night it's dead silent you don't mm. hear anything like i've never lived in a place so quiet and there's no restaurants in the town i live in like there's literally 200 houses and it's in the middle of the mountains and for me to go to a grocery store or to get to a restaurant or any semblance of fit civilization, um, the first grocery store is about half an hour away and it's horrible. Mm. So <laughs> I have to go once a week, one hour I have to drive once a mm. week just to get to a decent place to pick up some decent produce. And uh, yeah, so like, I guess I'm fortunate because when I was, when I did get into the transition, when I first started, and I've always lived rural since all this. I didn't. I don't have McDonald's around. I don't have any fast food around. So it was easy for me to not ever have those cravings. So right, right away it was like the worst I'm going to eat is something I find in the grocery store that I picked. So yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's interesting. Yeah, but uh, an hour away <laughs> to go yeah. to the store, you got to roll, you know, go drive an hour. Yeah, every well, so it's like a like four, you know, four hour days. that way, an hour back. Yeah, it's a four hour trip to get my groceries every week because I need two hours wow. to boot around going to the different places mm -hmm. and then an hour there and an hour back. So that's why I do a lot of videos in my car. <laughs> In fact, yeah. that's the only videos I yeah, do. Right, right, right. Yeah, let let the time <laughs> let the time serve you, as they say. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so, so let's talk a little bit about your book. Oh, yay! Yes. Heal thyself, embracing our natural diet for optimal health. So, yes. uh, so one one of the things that I really like now, so to so people don't know, I, I have an article in here. I was very honored to have Maria ask me to uh, to write something because there's some sections in here of, of uh, about Arnold Eric and Mucus's diet, and so I gave her some feedback on some of the things that she wrote about Mucus's diet and Arnold Eric, and then I uh, got an article in here and a couple other things, and so uh, yeah, definitely honored to be a part of this. And uh, so just talk a little bit about your your path to this. And I'll say one, one of the things that I really like about it, I like the analysis of all the, those the different modalities and the, kind of the different guru figures and things and sort of mm -hmm. the, the comparative. It's similar to, uh, in, in essence, to in the mucus diet healing system where Eric analyzes all the different uh diets of his era where he just and he doesn't have to go into big detail about it he'll just say this this diet and kind of compare say the you know the the way people are thinking about it or the the doctors that created it or whatever and the, all those different cures and stuff and so so i think that's that's really cool with your book i like that but uh, talk a little bit about yeah just how you conceived of it and you know how how, um, how you brought it into being well, it had been a few years in the making. I actually, I started the book probably six years after I began uh, the my transition. And, you know, I was doing health coaching for free for a couple of years so I could learn more about people and about things. And uh, as I was gathering information, I knew I wanted to compile it all into a book. But I stopped about halfway through writing it because I, I didn't want it to be all about myself and my thoughts and because I mean in all reality I'm just another person out there and it's like and I'm not an expert and I don't have an MD or you know so I just I didn't want it to be all about myself and it just worked out where it flowed where um like the the first chapter is my healing success story the first uh the first healing healer sorry, the first person who got me onto plant-based diet was Robert Young. So that's the next chapter. Um, and I just kind of went through it in order from who I discovered first and, and so on. So I went to Robert Young, then I went to Professor Arnold Eric because I discovered his information. And then uh, Robert Morse came after that and his information, I kind of got into that. And so, and then Dr. John McDougall kind of popped onto my radar, but that was kind of a quick you know, it, it came and went very quickly. I just, mm -hmm. I had to experiment though. I had to just see because, you know, I just, it was killing me. <laughs> and then uh, natural hygiene and then Dr. Joel Furman. I just kind of wanted to throw, you know, a few different people in there, but you know, it just, it just flowed so well. And uh, once I really got into it, it, it didn't, you know, it, I, I wrote it within uh, eight months or so. I just kind of got into it and it just flowed and, after I tabled it for years, <laughs> but um, yeah, I really enjoyed uh, what you contributed though to the book. I mean, I, and I should have put it in the table of contents like I was mentioning because your passage is in, uh, is under, not under who Professor Arnold Eret was, but on the mucusless diet healing system food lists. Right. So I, I, you annotated and revised those, and I added those into this book. And then in that chapter, that's where your insights are. And I mean, it was phenomenal what you wrote. I just, I loved it. I mean, you talked about transformation and how it doesn't happen overnight. And, you know, it's a process and people need to understand that. But we're living in such a fast paced society that people want 
answers now or they want results now. And if they're not getting it, they're moving on to something else, right? And so that's what I really liked about what you wrote there. But I don't know. I mean, at, at the last chapter is save the planet, heal thyself. And I just talk about kind of what you talked about in, our intro in your introduction for this video is like um, the more people that clean up their diets and, and bring their selves back into health, the healthier this place will become. But it's a slow process, unfortunately, as well, because we we're so far removed from our natural diet and how to live like people are so confused there's so much misinformation misinformation out there so i just wanted to kind of offer something that was simple easy to understand and that could help anybody no matter what stage they're at you know to transition i mean even if you don't change your diet at all except you eliminate dairy you're gonna probably add 10 years to your life or you right. know or quality of life you're gonna everything's gonna get so much better like so there's so many different ways people can incorporate the information and it's just how far you want to take it. And for people like you and I, we wanted to take it all the way because I mean, what else is there? You, you've you got to, I want to, you know, live to my full potential and do things on this earth. I don't want to be worrying about what to eat every day. And, right. you know, finally, I'm at that point where I don't have to worry about what to eat every day or what to do for my body. You know, it took a long time to figure out, but, now we can just share this information with other people through our writings. I mean, your book's phenomenal. It's helped me tremendously along my journey as well. Um, so shout out to that. <laughs> and yeah, I mean, the more people that understand this and write about it, the the better this place will become. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I'm in the chat. I'm gonna put a link to your book there. Thank you. And uh, yeah, everybody, yeah, check it out. And uh, yeah, here we on good old Amazon over here. Yeah, good old Amazon. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think uh, eventually I'm gonna I'll post some of my my chapter up on as a, as a blog post on MucusFreeLife.com and then link to your book. And, nice. Uh, and that way, uh, I was gonna do a YouTube video and just read your passage. Mm. Um, just. And then I need to edit it on Amazon and just put your name in that chapter, like insights from Professor Spira on chapter 10. But I mean, the book wouldn't be what it is without your insights. I'm telling you, that just just, just made my day that you said yes and you wrote something for it, to be honest. Because I've been following your work for since the very beginning. Since I discovered Eric, I discovered you simultaneously, of course. Mm. You guys are like... <laughs> <laughs> one <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah so talk uh yeah a little bit about some of the 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 comparison section that was interesting and uh yeah what are some of the the biggest uh differences and similarities that you would see that, that you would uh, how you would articulate that with some of the big uh guess you'd say the the different gurus or the different modalities uh, that you talk about in here hmm. yeah um well i will say that the most information um that i've gleaned for my uh personal path like has come from the natural hygienic information from arnold Eretz information and from dr robert morse i think I've learned, you know, the most from those three and, and yourself. So um, in terms of like, including Dr. Robert Young, I did so because he, while he does have some good information, I do feel that some of it is quite harmful. And so I, and, and same with like Dr. Joel Furman and Dr. John McDougall, I would say that, you know, they are doctors in essence. So they do have that, that doctorate type mindset and it's very rigid and there is no other way. I, I don't know. There's just so much I could say that my mind's spinning. It's like, <laughs> where do I even well, You did a good job. Cause I remember well, yeah, when I was reading it, I'm like, all right, how are you going to, how are you going to talk about these guys? And then yeah. you, did, you, you did, laid it out. It was like objective, but you hit the part the parts that make sense to hit that where they don't make sense, the you know, different things they recommend. And uh, 
because it is a thing where a lot of a lot of folks, you know, the folks in our community and practice music, we they don't they don't even know who those folks are. They they they're just <laughs> it's like they either they'll know basically what you said. They'll know the hygienists, some of the hygienists. They'll know Dr. Boris, and that's about it. They're not gonna you know, really yeah. know some of those guys, but, but they're, they're big names in terms of just uh, influence. And, uh, I tend to be, whenever I would hear them talking or see their recommendations, I would be disappointed generally, but, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but well, that's, that's what I, in chapter 11, I did comparing different approaches. Right. So I spoke about like what each of the gurus for lack of a better term that are included in this book you know like for example i'd be like apple cider vinegar what does eric say does eric believe apple cider vinegar is health promoting what does dr joel Furman say you know and so i i compared what everybody thinks about these various different approaches even with enemas or with uh like yeah it's just like so yeah yeah I mean, there's just so much yeah, yeah. And I, I just thought that was real interesting because that's sometimes the 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 kind of stuff that I that I used to used to do more of that. And then I just you know, now I have a I'll I'll hear about the, the new people from from other folks. They'll tell me uh about uh you know where I still try to you know keep my ear out for different people and their opinions or what they're talking about and stuff just so I can uh you know, be able to have conversations with people, especially if they're coming from those influences or they hear about the mucus's diet from within that space, then uh, I like to have something to say about it that's not too negative. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, to where yeah. It's like, that's how they found out about it. So it's kind of like, all right, well, you know, that's, I'm glad you found out about it. We disagree with, with some of what they say, but, uh, but yeah, the one that that the, probably the one that just sticks out to me as being so uh, so strange is that starch solution stuff. Yeah, I, I would what have to that? agree with you. And what is that about? You know, like, how they even come up with that? And and I don't want to be negative or put anything out there, but like I, I have been following Dr. John McDougall for a while just to see, kind of you know, we all follow each other to see what what people are doing, what they're looking like. Is, is it working? Is it not? And uh, I clearly, I can see that, you know, the, the starch, that's too much starch, <laughs> that recommendation. It's just like, even when I, I experimented on myself, I still had to cut back on the starch. I just wanted to see how digestible it was because it's essentially sugar, right? And our body thrives on sugar. And so I wanted to see how the body honestly assimilates it and breaks it down and uh i got to a point and it didn't take long because i had practiced the mucusless diet healing system for so long and and mainly raw that i just like crashed and burned and i was like nope starch solution diet is not good for somebody coming from this end of the spectrum maybe no. if you're coming from animal products and and as right. a transition type diet which is what I do sometimes recommend to people that I know aren't going to really change, like they're not going to go this far and they're not going to gravitate towards mucusless diet or towards natural hygienic. They need something more mainstream. Mm. Then you can recommend starch solution, but still it's not, it's not going to, it's only going to take you so far and it's not going to be that far. And right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's a, yeah, that's, that's an interesting one. It is. Have have you delved into his work at all, or years ago? It? Yeah, years ago. Uh, but it, it's like I did. I didn't get too far in because I was just seeing so much stuff that I did that, yeah. Yeah. that was just disagreeing with. But it was. Uh, it, it definitely what is that mainstream? Yeah. Vegan thing. I think I looked into him when uh, this was way way back because I think he he was he worked. If I'm not mistaken, he was one of the vegan influences on Bill Clinton years huh? back. Like Bill Clinton, the you know former president, had had all these heart attacks and strokes and whatever he was going right. through, and so he had actually went vegan for a while. I think he was I think it was McDo he was working with, 
And uh, so that was one of the things that started to put him on the on the map a little bit. Could be making that up, but I I I, I have that I, in my head. I, I think to... I think you're not making that up. Okay. I just saw Natural Law Health said starch solution equals glue solution. I would have to agree. Yeah. Oh, wow. It's and and you can see it in the skin tone and whatnot. It's just it's too much uh, sticky, mucusy, mucus forming foods. Um, in the diet it's just not serving anyone and it can be worse than eating some of the worst offenders sometimes in terms of like elimination so right nice yeah yeah that's uh patty i don't know if you met yeah that uh yeah patty dr patty lagger if you if you met her yes i, yeah, I do yeah. know i followed a <laughs> bit of her work in the past yeah yeah <laughs> they do. They, they do look pasty and pale. And I think I could see it in my skin tone as well. Like, like now, like I used to get really pale in the winter and I'm just coming out of the winter, right? Like really pale. And that was because of my diet. And I noticed that over the years of like cleaning up the body and whatnot, my tan would last longer. And then like, I wouldn't get as pale. But if I did at any time eat like some potatoes, for example, um, cause I had a few bouts of that on mm -hmm. the beginning years. Right. Um, I would be able to see it. Like you just, you notice it in the skin tone. Yeah. Like immediately, immediately. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't even take I didn't want to be rude about Dr. John McDougal, but the truth is he's very, very pale and, and his diet is like, I, I can't believe he can't change it or see this or it's just it's shocking to me like it, he's deteriorated very quickly and it, i don't want to you know but it's just after not seeing him for about five years and then seeing him was just like whoa whoa what happened like it's unfortunate right. because starch can really bring you down yeah yeah it's it's you know, I've, I've always been fascinated with some of the, the different pathways that are created and because the when these things work, the only person that I've ever seen really have uh, a really good explanation that that uh, kind of this umbrella understanding of when something works, why it works, even if it the mindset could be totally different than somebody over here. But generally speaking, when somebody heals from some of these other modalities, somewhere in there, there's some kind of food restriction. And uh, yeah, and so even if they're eating, and he gives the example of the milk diet, which used to be a thing, which is still kind of a thing. And I, I look at the uh, slim fast and the inshores and any kind of liquid. When you go to the hospital, they give you a liquid diet. And there's a bunch of whey and all kinds of mess and dairy and stuff in there. It's basically, I just look at that as a milk diet with a bunch of crap in there. But Eric talks about that. But what he says is it's a camouflaged fast. So even if you're eating mucus forming foods or even if even pus forming foods, but it's a it's a small amount and it's a lot smaller than where you come from, you have a you you can definitely heal yourself from that you know from if certain now not all things but certain ailments will heal just making those kind of changes but people get lost in there thinking like aha i've healed and they don't understand why they actually healed it wasn't the white potatoes that healed you it was you stopped eating big, yeah. big macs or whatever you know all the other stuff and we see that with the meat eaters all the time because there's this carnivore diet that a lot of people gravitate towards and and i get messages all the time people saying well what about this person look at them they look great and it's like well you know my take and you know subject to change but i'm fairly certain i'm correct on this is that it's not the meat that's healed them it's everything else that they left out of the diet right they they eliminated all the processed stuff and all the mucus forming stuff and now they're just eating meat and salads well the body can heal up to a certain point they may probably never heal completely but they will you know experience a certain level of healing in the body because of everything and, else and being it in a little it's it's like part of 
what people don't like about this path when you get real serious about it is you go through periods of coming down off of the stimulant, off of the drug. If you look at meat and dairy and these particular pus forming foods as high octane stimulants, then uh, and, and if you've ever come off of them, then you you can relate to that. And so if you get back on a little for the people that do do that, there's like you say, go and they'll they'll some some salads and they have their little little meat thing and then they're they're like oh man i feel so much better and this and that and and it's yeah they're if you could do cocaine you're gonna feel good for a little while you know it's just (laughs) you don't yeah yeah and it's like you know and 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 there's people that can do do drugs for many many years and some people are able to to sustain it and uh, longer than than others you know and that's just different levels of tolerance what i've learned is generally the the sicker you are the easier it is for you to tolerate Mm -hmm. the worst drugs you know and the worst foods you know you your tolerance is actually quite deep as opposed to uh, like you were talking about you you couldn't go back to the starch (laughs) at, at a certain point you know where that that was that was not going to feel good so when you go back but that's why i preach transition transitioning properly so much is because you can transform your physiology to a point where it's impossible to go back to things that you're not supposed to go back to or at least impossible without transitioning back and uh yeah and a few few people doing that but that that's the connection they the folks they they think they're it's nutritious. They're getting nutrition. They feel better. Like oh, nutrition. They don't understand is uh, stimulant. And so, yeah. and you can you yeah you you can feel good for a while, and but you know there, there's there's limit limit a lot of limitations. A lot of other stuff this factors in too is in terms of like I said how long you transition, but then you can start looking at your bloodline. So some so some people you better not go back <laughs> to none of that because you just, it, it's wouldn't even be permitted with your, with your bloodline consideration. Uh, but yeah, but it's, it's interesting to to watch these things and to watch folks that are, <laughs> yeah. are, are kind of, you know, go, going <laughs> in and out of things. And, and uh, I mean, th- I tell the story of, uh, I literally remember telling the, the guy that now is one of the, the most famous gluttons on the planet, Nikocado Avocado. He used to be a part of the Dr. Morris, like ba- way back in the day. He was in one of these original Facebook support group forums and he was doing these, you know, he was trying to do his like raw, raw vegan videos and this kind of stuff. And I, and I, and he was in the support group complaining one time talk because first he's got videos where he's for one meal he's eating like six avocados as a meal (laughs) nothing else that's like Uh, literally what this dude is eating and i can't even eat half right and so he gets on there asking some questions or complaining about something that's saying because he's going through something physiologically or is he sick or whatever he was complaining about and everybody's giving him all these different recommendations and it's part of what i and they weren't transition recommendations. It's like, Oh yeah, well just eat more fruit or do more herbs and that kind of stuff. So I'm like that one lonely voice. That's, that's like, Hey, look, look, dude, you need to transition slower. Like, first of all, you know, cooked food is not evil. If you cook mucus free food could really help you out, but you need to, I just basically gave him like, I wrote quite a bit. It was like a little transition rant. And, uh, (laughs) Transition. I don't think you listen to me because he, he ended up, you know, just being a, a, an infamous, just, just the infamous glutton, you know, you know mukbang video yeah. guy. Oh, but uh, but that's but but that's a case study. You know, there's a lot of these case studies. He's probably one of the more famous ones that people don't even know about the that real backstory. They know he was maybe vegan for a while, but not that he was basically one of those kind of like sort of annoying on his <laughs> on his videos where just like really putting it in your face just oh yeah we're all vegan it's so great and this and that and, you know and then i'm just looking at him like 
this isn't going to end well, is it? Because you don't you just totally refused any kind of transitional concept. And, uh, and we, we yeah. see the result. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, for sure. I mean, the transition is just so important because when those those cravings arise because you have like these toxins in your body from past associated with past, you know, foods that you used to eat, it'll help you navigate and help you like figure out how to move past that instead of falling back to something really bad. Like, like that's what a lot of people don't really grasp. Like it's importance, you know, like there's people that are jumping from a sad diet and they're going into like, 300 day juice cleanses these days right things like that it's just like yeah, whoa yeah. <laughs> but then, yeah yeah then the cravings come up because they never transitioned first before they you know got into that juice cleanse or whichever but yeah 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 <laughs> yeah i met david avocado wolf at the canadian fruit festival <laughs> okay well i was talking about the well the, yeah the nikocado but you oh, talk okay. about that yeah, so I'm yeah, not yeah, that's that's not the so Nick Avocado Avocado is not not, not David Wolf. I got confused. <laughs> I just heard uh, avocado and I was like, whoa, is that is that yeah, no, here I'll I'll, sh <laughs> I, I, I'll, sh I'll have to I'll look this you. individual. No, I, I'll, I'll show you who I'm I'm I'm, I'm talking about th this guy. Oh, you know what? I've uh, I've seen the some things like yeah, it's difficult to watch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah he, yeah right yeah so this here's a video of him where he's he's doing this juxtaposition of what he used to look like so th this is what he looked like when he was when he was doing his 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 raw his raw vegan promotional channel this was okay. kind of the vibe right but then this is and then that's up <laughs> yeah the, yeah then that that yeah this, then this is him now oh, <laughs> oh know, wow what a transformation yeah yeah, yeah it's, definitely it's, it's, so yeah i mean he i mean he just he he plays up the yeah the, just th this whole i mean so, it's like an act but he he real but he's really he uh yeah it's yeah it's, i i can see <laughs> This is all all wrong. This is just all wrong. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. You can you can see the 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 juxtaposition here so, of uh, you know because uh, yeah I mean this was that was who I first knew in the Dr. Morris group and uh, coming and you do a video eat, where he would do a video where he's just he's eating six avocados and that's his meal and I just sit yeah. there like. This this is I mean, I could have never imagined this, <laughs> you know, I mean, this was that I, I wouldn't have yeah. didn't know we were gonna get that bad. But uh, but yeah, yeah, this he, planet needs a lot of help a lot. Yeah. Yeah. So that's so that's what I'm talking about. Not not David. Wolf. <laughs> no, it's, yeah. Sorry about that. Mis mis <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, no. David, yeah. David Wolf. Yeah. He's yeah. Yeah. No, he's. He's doing what he does. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. You thought it was <laughs> well, just for a second, I was like, really? Oh, okay. <laughs> he must have really gone off into left field. Yeah, uh, yeah, no. But, but you so but you met met David, uh David Wolf. So that makes sense. You met him at a in I event. did. Uh Ted Carr put on this Canadian fruit festival in the mm. summer here and it was uh many years ago and uh i went and yeah it was it was quite the quite the interesting scene i guess you could say i mean i would i would love to put together some sort of retreat or a fruit festival someday or mucusless type festival or a natural hygienic festival anything i mean that maybe in another 10 years that'll happen working towards it yeah 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 it's they they are they are a lot of work <laughs> to do yes we started doing the the uh, arnold Eric day celebrations in 2018 yeah, i saw that and then uh so now we're 
they're a little bit more private affairs. And so we got the one this year and we kind of put it together behind the scenes. It's a little different format. We don't fly people in to do the the talks and, and anything, at least we will again in the future. But like right now, the, the, the past couple of years, it just, it was really enjoyable to just not have all the, the formality and just have people get together that practice the lifestyle that appreciate Eric's work and we just kind of have like our little almost like a little private <laughs> little get together yeah and, uh, guess that's but less it's, stress yeah yeah less stress it was i mean i i just had ended up having way more fun when the the first year we did that uh we're tote with well, was that last i guess last year was was the first yeah i think last year was the first year where we totally did that where we didn't have any you know didn't have to rent a place to 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 come have the the lectures and fly everybody in and that kind of stuff which again you know I, that that's that's great but at that time i was doing a lot of the the organizing and and, and everything and it was a little little too much for me and and that's not not my forte is you know put i'm not a party planner or like an event because some people that's their gift they yeah. <laughs> they love putting together <laughs> events and this kind of stuff and and I'm I'm the guy that like just put me on stage and give me a microphone. That that's, yeah. that's what that's where I feel very most comfortable. But uh, but no, it's it's been really uh, yeah. Because last year we got this, it was a mini mansion that looked really similar to the Eretz old sanitariums when they had those pictures of those old Eretz sanitariums, and it looked real similar to that. And so uh, so we had that. Then this year. We have this big uh it's like a big cabin it's like it's but it's not not like a cabin i'm it's it's literally like a like a cabin mansion <laughs> it's like a, yeah. i mean it's 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 this huge kind of thing and so uh i think it's on i don't know five or six acres of, of land and it's real it's, yeah, it's real real pretty out there but but yeah no it's definitely yeah yeah i i respect anybody that puts on the, these kind of events for <laughs> sure not, yeah not easy to do and you never know how it's going to turn out and if you're going to take a big hit or not you just have to have faith because yeah that's, yeah. yeah yeah we yeah good yeah, yeah, got got rough the because we had had the yeah going through that the covid period we we tried that we wanted to have it that that year the year when everything went haywire and uh <laughs> it was just you know we we it just could, couldn't couldn't make it happen so so we ended up skipping that year but then uh but then coming coming back strong the next year and uh and we even had well, that was the year we had doc, dr morris was uh he video videoed in you know, he he did a presentation and, nice. uh, and did a q a and uh then and uh chef babette she she came to that one and gave a presentation and oh, nice. uh, so yeah so we came we, we had a, a nice strong we came back strong it was yeah. just a lot of work and then the uh, then the next year was the year where it was uh again really strong and i know and there's all this content that you know, there's video from these events that i just I still haven't got out there or edited and uh but that one was the one we took took a little hit you know a little financial hit but we we had folks that that helped us out you know that, that definitely so it wasn't wasn't like tragic, but it was just uh, it was just kind of the way things were moving around. It was, it, yeah, it was, yeah, there was a number of reasons why, but, but yeah, it was, yeah. Uh, yeah, that was the challenge. And so then the following year, we're like, all right, we're just going to do something small and do everybody kind of chip in. And so no tickets or sale, you know, that kind of thing. Everybody, we just all kind of throw something in and make it happen. And, and uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Nice. Yeah, that COVID uh, era really, really shed a lot of light on the state of society in general. Like, you know, I always kind of knew it was bad, for lack of a better word. But just seeing that take place, I was just like, wow. Oh, wow. Like, there's right. so much work to do. That's why it's so important that we just keep going. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. It's that. Yeah. I mean, I lost a lot of respect for humanity in general <laughs> because, yeah. 
Yeah, you think? <laughs> yeah, it, I just yeah really didn't think that folks would just turn over that easy and people that that you didn't think would go for the okie doke went for the you know, yeah. went for the nonsense and i had yeah. people tell me that they weren't doing it and then they did it and i was like what happened there How, right i don't get that <laughs> yeah 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 it was it was bizarre and then now people try to act like they, they like nothing happened they forgot <laughs> about it and they're it act like they moved moved on with life and i'm like hold on don't no nah, we stockholm syndrome where you just want to yeah. forget about your abuser in the past because like it's just too painful to think about <laughs> right i mean yeah i would feel pretty pretty awful um you know if i if i did go for everything and then learned about it afterwards that it wasn't a good thing to do that <laughs> Now up there in Canada, there, was there a pressure? Well, well, because I know it seemed oh. down here, it seemed like it was really crazy up there as far as just. It was really crazy. I had a, like, I know, I know a doctor in the hospital, not, you know, a couple hours away. And she, she ended up getting fired um, because she wouldn't take it. And the thing is, even today, they won't let her come back to work. They're they're mm. flying in foreign workers and whatnot because they're, we have a shortage of nurses, but that's because they fired a lot of them because the nurses knew mm -hmm. what not to do. Right. For a lot, you know, and so um, she's actually flying to work in another province over now. So she has to, she flies to work every like, and it's only an hour flight, but she's still has to get on that plane and she works like three work three weeks on and then she has a week off and she goes back to her family and it's like wow. it's it's a mess i mean i actually went to this uh to this uh trade show craft fair i had no idea because it was in a big senior center and it was like a really high-end one where it had elevators and a gift shop and and this was just uh like a month ago and i went there because i i, I bought a little table to promote my little book and and so I, I walk through the door and they're requesting masks at the door and I just politely said I don't wear masks I never have I have an exemption and they looked at me and said you don't have an exemption and I said yes I'm exempt and they were like they couldn't believe it and I was like I can't believe I traveled two hours to get here and nobody said anything about this requirement to me or I wouldn't have signed up. I wouldn't have come. And so she, finally she was like, fine, take this shield. I was like, okay, I'll take your shield. And I just kind of placed it on my head, let it fall off and pick it up. And I was kind of making a joke out of it, but she was getting really annoyed with me. So I sat at the table and I see a few people walking around without masks. And I said, hey, how did you get away with not wearing a mask? And they're like, oh, we live here and we're fully. And I'm uh. like, and I was just like, this is a really bad environment for me. So I was sitting there and I, right. I, I actually sold a couple books to people that I would never have thought would buy one of the books, but they did. And after one hour, I politely left. I was like, I can't keep myself here for another five hours. It's just not my environment. And, and it's not good for my health to be here. And this book's about right. health. <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah that's what happened there so yeah and that was just recently like masks full out masks oh like recently yeah. just recently oh, like wow. it hasn't ended here it's right. still going on so yeah yeah it's <laughs> <sighs> yeah this, this was yeah i remember i did a uh i did a video <laughs> when they had the 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 trucker protest i, I did a uh, a, a video in, in in solidarity with the Canadian truckers and that, and that whole situation. And then yeah. I saw they were, uh, I mean, they were freezing people's bank accounts and all this kind of stuff. And so it was like an, an educational opportunity to pe for people to really see that things they thought they that you controlled, if it's controlled, it was centralized means you don't control it. Yeah. So the, the At bank, any time yeah. they can pull the plug out. Um, right. And uh, yeah, that was that was a big big thing here. I mean, and we still have the protests to these days going on um, in the city of Kelowna every mm -hmm. Saturday. 
they're still meeting because it's not over and they can do this anytime. Right. They can pull it on us again. And so they still meet and, you know, I'm, I'm, it, it's good, but I don't know what results can really come of that unless, you know, more people clean up their health and their diets and, and become like sovereign within themselves um, to be able to withstand and to, to be able to stand up to these things in the, in an, the proper way. It's hard to explain, but like, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, I, I just remember when this whole thing started, I, I called a town hall meeting in March of 2020 and I got the documentation. I'd created this whole document because I was ready to go to war. I was like, let's let's go get ready for this. People didn't even believe me that what was about to happen was because I kind of saw it coming pretty early. And um, people were like, yeah, Spirit, you're just, nah, that ain't going to happen. They can't do that. That's your conspiracy or conspiratorial or whatever. I was just like, hey, all I've, I've just, I'm not omniscient. I've studied history and I see, I, I see, I've seen this story before. Yeah, yeah. History repeats itself. It goes in cycles. There's patterns and it's happening again and it, it'll come and go. Yeah. And all that, you know, and I had to delete like 50 really good videos. Like I was very, I was proud of those videos that, that we made uh -huh. in those, that little period. And pretty much all of them had to be taken. They, they live elsewhere, but nobody is else. Everybody's on YouTube. People aren't over on Odyssey and, you know, our people, um, our community is not on Rumble and stuff. And, uh, but uh, yeah, because we were, there was stuff. As I was go going into the history and you go back to like 1918, it was the same thing where there was people, the, the pro mask, anti mask, pro medical procedure, anti medical procedure. Like, and, and it, 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 looking at those pictures and reading those articles, it was like you could have just copied and pasted that whole thing to 2020, 2021. It, it happened, just happened again. Yeah. And, uh, because it works so well for those who are in charge for what they want to achieve and accomplish that why wouldn't they do it again <laughs> yeah like yeah yeah it was you know yeah that was really you know really something i mean it definitely it, it forced everybody to really put a line in the sand where you were going to see where people were at yeah just, just just like you said people that you didn't think that that were saying oh yeah i'm not gonna do it then all of a sudden they go and they and caved like, they wanted to go to mexico they just caved they're like i want to travel and i'm like well so did i but i just decided not to because i care about right. my health <laughs> yeah 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 that was uh well and we had <laughs> so i'll tell the the the, the brady is he's probably in the chat somewhere but he yeah he got uh coming down this would have been 2021 for for that year's era day they uh they stopped them at the border and they were like treating them like a like a criminal you know and put them in the room and was like it was you know it was like whoa so where are you going and what you doing and he's explaining you know era day celebration and then columbus ohio and this kind of stuff but just uh just that type of a vibration where you know that wouldn't have happened years ago that you would get where you know you're talking about somebody that's it's that definitely doesn't have any kind of no kind of drugs no kind of nothing there's all that's in there is pretty much is fruit <laughs> clothes and fruit is what he's got <laughs> and uh he's traveling that's all you need and, yeah and and uh but yeah he got he i think he was they had him delayed, I think a couple hours. I think they was grilling him and questioning him and this kind of stuff. And yeah, yeah it's that's why I kind of stay over here in Canada. I mean, I'm not I'm not a fan of uh, putting myself into um, situations where I don't know what the outcome is going to be, you know, because like if I go to the airport, I'm asking to opt out of the scanner and I'm always standing out in some way, whether I've got a bunch of fruit in my bag or I'm saying no to something and then so it's just always a scene <laughs> so i guess i'm kind of stuck over here in canada <laughs> and right. there's not a lot going 
going on because I'm seeking the warmer areas and I live in the warmest area of Canada um, for a summer months and whatnot. And then, you know, like I'm just at the tip of BC and then there's nothing else. There's just borders and ocean and it's like, can't really go any further. And yeah. But. Yeah. 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 That's, yeah, we humans got a lot of a lot of work to do, a lot of studying to do to uh, yeah, wake up. And unfortunately, you know, my my prediction, we're, we're going to we're going to unfortunately lose a lot of people that unnecessarily that we didn't have to lose. But mm -hmm. they're they're you know, we're not going to reach everybody. You know, we're not going to get to everybody. And there's uh, we're in a very, very self-destructive path for sure there's yeah, there's a yeah. lot of family lines that have been lost now you know like i i know that humanity won't like fully extinct but we but many are on the verge of extinction for their family lines and and uh it, it's very unfortunate um you know the population that keeps saying it's it's growing but at the same time it's getting sicker and people are uh they're dying longer they're, they're holding on longer, but the quality of life isn't there anymore. And people are, you know, feeling bad by the time they hit 50 and it's right. like, and that's, well, that's actually, that's an excellent point. Cause people, people don't understand that. Cause I, I often talk about that. It's the norm. If you do make it into your sixties or seventies, then the last 15, 20 years of your life of for many people's lives is in decrepitude. You know, they're yeah. either stuck in a nursing home or they can't really walk well or they're and you study enough different cultures and enough history history of people around the world and cultures that was not normal you know that was not the case just because you got old didn't mean that you were gonna have to be decrepit you know there it was possible yeah. to to age gracefully and to to actually pass away without immense pain and suffering i mean that that yeah. is possible but oh. they they've tried to normalize this yeah uh, exactly they've normalized the symptoms so people think it's normal and they just think it's part of growing old and it's not if it was everybody hands down would go through those issues but there's you know women out there that don't go through menopause and there's people running around in their 90s still driving cars and but then you know the majority of them unfortunately are their quality of life is diminished by the time they're 50 60. i see that somebody asked spera and mariah do you think that ones who survive will all migrate back to the tropics and i'm thinking i mean i would love to but with all this control and the borders and whatnot it's, it's makes it difficult but i would think that's that's where i gravitate towards i want to go towards warmer climate <laughs> like what are we doing here yeah 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 no i think we we definitely th those of us there there will be you know we're talking over we got generations to to work with i i think generationally so i thought thinking like chunks of 100 200 years and so we will definitely because because those of us that are in the know you know, part of what we're working on is trying to get resources together and put a plan together so that we can relocate someplace together and create Eret Village and have a place for people like us that we're growing our own food and we've got our own solar and whatever the different off the grid kind of stuff and where we create our own society, our own nation and and, and and as long as they don't come mess with us, it's like we're we will leave that alone and whatever's happening, uh, yeah. yeah, let let that happen in the where people because it's you know, people it's hard for folks to really recognize and see these things depending on where they're at. Cause there are certain cities that just in the past five years, the the quality of life has went down so significantly because mm -hmm. just with what we we're talking about over the, the COVID era of loan where people were forced to not work. So now you have a huge infusion of 
homelessness in the society. And a lot of this, what, what seems to be going hand in hand with the homelessness is getting addicted to the, there's always a new drug out, you know, now the fentanyl thing is heavy and uh, that kind of stuff. But, you know, that, that's not, I don't see that getting better within the pus and mucus world. You know, that it's, you know, the, though the Philadelphia's and the, uh, you know, some of these cities in California and the Seattle's or whatever, you know, just all these places yeah. is, uh, you know, Portland or whatever, you know, like this stuff is, is only going to get worse and go to more places around the world. And, uh, so part of our, our plan, we always use this term, get, get out of the way, <laughs> you know, just get yeah. out of the way of the universe and let it do what it's going to do. It where, work, work itself out. Yeah. I, I like still, it. I still have these dreams of like opening like a fast fruit, um, drive through where people can drive through and, and on the menu board, it would give, you know, health tips and information that people never knew it could be ever changing. And then like, you know, you can get your banana ice cream or you can get like <laughs> smoothie bowl or, yeah, or some whole yeah. fruit at the window. But, right. you know, I mean, imagine if we could just uh, start turning things around in that sense and overriding. I mean, people are waking up and they are realizing that I mean, actually I shouldn't speak like that because they are, but they aren't. Every time I drive past yeah. McDonald's, I still see a lineup out onto the street. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what I'm seeing is I'm seeing this divide where it's gonna the two extremes are going to get really yeah. well defined and, and real yeah. spread out. So I you're agree. gonna have that the the health conscious people are gonna get real health conscious. You know, yeah. the, the type of folks that we kind of deal with then and the people that are not health conscious are going to be really not health conscious and yeah uh, avocado, avocado type of world uh, and uh and so that that version is going to extinguish itself like it's literally just going to take itself out because it's going to die out because that's not sustainable yeah. and uh and it, it's had its day and people will think well that's what every every run in the world but it it's it's not sustainable it's going to <laughs> it, it's it's going to end, and yeah. th those of us that are still here, <laughs> that are that uh, <laughs> that have some some a little bit of health and vitality to us, uh, yeah, we're we're going to be able to just take the reins as as they're folding over, dying. We'll just, okay, thank thank you. We'll take the <laughs> take the reins and. No, uh, I, I see that as well because it is it's like this divide, but it is like the world shifting in two different directions. It's like there's the really the people that are taking their health into their own hands and figuring it out. And because of the way the world is structured and what's going on, we have to pay attention to like every aspect and almost counteract everything. Like it's like the water. Well, everyone gets really terrible water. You have to find a way to clean your water or to get healthy, clean water. Like that's a struggle or like just everything. Everything is against us. And so we have to we have to learn how to navigate ourselves and to, but anyways, and then there's the other people, they're just accepting everything and doing whatever and just eating whatever. And yeah, they are, they are unfortunately taking themselves out without any help from, well, they got, they've got help. I mean, but. Well, yeah. Yeah. Like brother air says, they, they have a place for you. So they, we have all kinds of institutions and the, yeah. the most ornate cathedral esque hospitals and you know all the technology in the world to plug you in with stuff and which which for us you know eric wrote his his book or his, his article uh tragedy and nutrition and right. and i explained that the tragedy it's it's not that people you know are not getting enough nutrients or this sometimes people all oh, tragedy and nutrition it's like no it's literally a tragedy to watch people kill themselves when they think they're they think they're eating healthy or they yeah. think they're doing good and they're and they're, and they're just sitting there as the world around them is crumbling and falling apart and they're eating the reason why and they don't have a clue. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, there's just so much misinformation. And as you know, the mainstream has people confused to the point where they're chasing vitamins and nutrients and supplements and just anything. And they're just going after everything and they don't know what they're doing because everything's so complicated when really it's the truth is very simple. As Eric always says, the truth is simple. Um, it's so simple that people can't grasp that it's simple because we've been bombarded with misinformation to the contrary. And it all sounds so complicated and that the average person can't understand it. And so they all just throw their hands up and leave it to the experts and the scientists and the doctors. And then they end up uh, paying a price. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're talking <laughs> the, the blind leading the blind. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's real. That's that's real. <laughs> with, with that's that, very that real. Situation. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> yeah, because we can, you know, do so much better in terms of creating the we always say the sanctuary of healing. These hospitals that are supposed to be could just be so much better in terms of each hospital should be growing its own produce uh, and or just have yeah, some plants in there. <laughs> plants in there. Every room there should be a colonic system in every room or some kind of. Fresh air. Up for fresh air, you know, oh yeah, he heaven forbid that the, the window can open up a little bit and a little bit yeah. of fresh air can come in. And or like not use toxic cleaning products to the point where you walk in and you almost gag. Well, only the healthy people gag and then the unhealthy yeah. people are like, what? I don't smell anything. <laughs> right. Like, uh. Yeah. Yeah. That the, cause it's, it, I mean, I just remember just seeing like literal million dollar machines sitting there like this, these, some of these machines that keep you alive when you're almost dead, the, the ECMO machine and this kind of stuff is like a thousand a million dollars. And so they have money for that the million dollar machine. But then when they bring the food in, it's literally like yeah. a, a slap of, of meatloaf that was put into a microwave, some microwaved, vegetables like a little handful of, of vegetables that came out of a can it's, uh you know some uh, it's white you know, reconstituted yeah all plenty yeah plenty of salt uh then a lot of you know pop or soda or whatever different <laughs> whatever people call it now it's the very yeah. foods that landed them in the hospital that they're feeding back to them after they get their treatment or whichever well yeah it's like their base and that's what that's what i say where they if if you're near death they're good at bringing you back to baseline so they can take somebody that is they have the tools to take somebody that is near death and otherwise would die because they would be beyond yeah they might be beyond fasting uh the the state they might be in a point of no return where you put them on herbs or fat and it wouldn't make a difference or too far gone. You know, we, they, they know how to bring those people back, but mm -hmm. once they're brought back and they're stable in terms of, of then taking the healing to its logical conclusion, they have no clue. So yeah. it's like once you're stable, then here comes the horrible food and that's it. They're just going to keep you right where you're at. I refer to hospitals, and this may be, sound a little rude, <laughs> but as finishing houses, it's like you kind of do it to yourself, and then you go there, and you enlist in their care, and they finish you off a lot of times. I mean, they don't say it's that, but you can you can end up, you know, with the drug poisoning or whatever, but you, right. you, yeah, you, you, if you can avoid it. You're much better off not do, to do whatever you can. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> do whatever you can to to avoid it. Most definitely. Yeah. And, uh, see, there's a question. I think I've seen this question a couple of times. So, ad advice on dental care. What's your what's your your dental dental thoughts? My dental thoughts. Well, I don't think that people chew enough leafy greens. When you eat leafy greens like the the chewing action keeps your teeth clean and strong and strengthens your jaw and you'll see a lot of people you know they start getting the double chin and whatnot because they're always just eating like processed soft foods or mucus forming foods right but i think that 
if you want to keep your teeth clean and healthy, um, well, you need to eat the proper foods. You need to transition properly too. So you don't have too many like crazy acids coming through and destroying your teeth during eliminations. But I just think that it's all about what you're putting into your body and, uh, you know, and the body can heal like small cavities and things like that. Like, like minor issues. I've had my, my, I've had my teeth heal from little minor cavities and sensitivities and things like that. Um, but the teeth are a reflection of our inner terrain as well. So, I mean, you can look at like a tooth meridian chart and see where, you know, the problem teeth are connected to what organs and glands. And I find it pretty accurate actually, um, time and time again. But I just think that, yeah, um, get the, the greens and chew those greens, you know, nice big leafy green salad and uh, eat your fruit whole. Because a lot of people like I'm not against juicing or I'm not against smoothies, but I do know that whole fruit in its natural form is superior because it's not oxidized and it's not fractionated and it's not processed. And so like it's so important to get a lot of whole fruit in. And a lot of people don't do that, you know, like they'll just they'll just only do smoothies and juices and things. And I know that that eliminates well, it definitely does. And it doesn't cause any obstruction, but at the same time, I think that the body really needs what nature has to offer too, that we haven't kind of processed. So I try and keep a balance of like whole fruits in the diet. Um, and then definitely the leafy greens. I think that they're a game changer. Like a lot of people, don't include them. And I did an entire year not including uh, leafy greens in my diet just as an experimentation when I kind of was following Dr. Morris's advice. And I did my mm. detoxification certificate at that time. And I was like, I'm just going to do a whole year on fruits. And, and I did it, but it was more of a struggle because the cravings and I wasn't transitioned properly yet. Like, yes, I had a couple of years of transition under my belt, but um, definitely, uh, noticed like some issues arising too, during that time with my teeth becoming more sensitive and things. And I did later on put two and two together after learning the natural hygienic information where they really advocate to chew those greens. And for the reasons I just explained, like strengthening the teeth and keeping them healthy and keeping your jaw very worked. Right. But that that's my take, but I don't know, subject to new information or change whenever it comes my way. What do you think for teeth, keeping it healthy? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm real basic. I mean, I like what you said there. Yeah. With the, just, just, just getting, getting your diet together, period is yeah. going to help. And then I'm pretty just, you know, I, I believe in it's, you know, uh, to, to brush if you want to, you know, brush, right. get the, uh, get some of the, you know, some of that excess bacteria off of there or floss. If you got, food and your teeth and that kind of thing. And, um, and yeah, you know, and I don't do anything real fancy is, uh, well, I guess the most fancy I do. I like, uh, I have a, uh, a, a water pick. Uh, that's, that's yeah. fancy. You know, I was I always guess. curious about those. I always kind of wanted one. I like it. Cause it's, I'm just, my way I think about it is I just want to get the oxygen, you know, just get the oxygen in there. So I'll, get the water pick and yeah, just get, just go, go around my gums and feels good. And yeah, there's nothing harmful about that. Nothing invasive. That's why I wanted to try it. I probably will at some point, but I think if your diet's just really uh, health promoting to the best of your ability, like you're going to minimize any issues that arise with the teeth and just keeping them clean. Yeah, the, 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 the thing is, is really, well, if, if you bring a lot of acidosis, if you're the type of person that's holding a lot of acids up here in your jaw, especially before getting into the diet, and then yeah. you don't, you also don't transition very well. And you're just, you, yeah. you got all these ads. So if stuff isn't really moving and you're, you get these acids that are stuck there, then, uh, you know, cause that's when a lot of the you know, the raw food folks or the fruitarian people start talking about they're losing their teeth. And, you know, it's like, I mean, even eating nothing but fruit, but my teeth are starting to fall out. And I'm like, did you transition? We're like, well, well, no, I'm just, I'm eating fruit. We're fruitarians, right? I'm like, <laughs> no, not yet. Yeah, <laughs> you know, you gotta, we were, we want to get back there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like, we, we can get back there, but, but yeah, so a lot of that is, 
yeah, it depends on if because if you neutralize a lot of those acids during the course of the transition, there's yeah. different ways to neutralize them, but you know, you got to get them neutralized or you can start having those problems and it'll be wherever that acidosis is localized. So for some people it's up here and they have problems with their teeth and they're get because it's more, it's, it's easy to do the external because you're basically, and I say the same thing, even about just body odor in general, you have, there's internal factors and external factors and in the pus and mucus world, they pretty much only focus on this external factors and their solutions are disease forming and cancer causing solutions to try to not smell, to deal with the, uh, the stench inside. But, uh, you know, if you deal with the stench inside, then externally, you're just dealing with the buildup of a little bit of bacteria here and there. And, uh, and that can be dealt with, I deal with that stuff, which is lemon juice. I, I'm a yet lemon juice. I'm an extra internal external lemon juice person. So I'm aware, <laughs> you know, so I, that, that, work for a while. yeah, it's like, to me, that just, that just makes sense. And so the, the, uh, the, uh, lemon juice under, under the armpits and in any kind of crevices or anything like that, it, yeah. it, it eliminates whatever's going on. It, it takes amazing. care of it. Love yeah. Lemon juice. I've used it the odd time for like deodorant if I'm going somewhere nice or something, you know, so right. I'd rather smell like a lemon than whatever they've got in the store. <laughs> yeah. 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 Those, yeah. One that, that, all that, that, that chemical mess is just, she has nothing good about it. And even the natural, the, the, the natural things that you can get those natural deodorants are still, it's like oil based is all these oils and, all yeah. this uh just gunk is you're you're putting up on you and it's like yeah yeah clogging it's, it's just yeah it's not it's adding insult to injury <laughs> right and uh so so you know so i'm a i, I i'm an advocate of of general hygiene some people so, some folks in our circles aren't you know they're, they're more <laughs> just let like let's let's be 100 natural all the time you know you got folks that don't don't take baths and go you know i'm not an advocate of that or even Eric talks about the the, the bath now i'll say i'm i might indulge we have our indulgences my indulgence maybe is i like a nice hot shower and i, I like too. it i like it long <laughs> so I, will, I like it too warm i think because i'm a yeah yeah creature. yeah no, I, like, I like exactly i turn it way up and in I the winter indulge. i've eaten i've eaten apples and and fruit in the bathtub <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah that's like a nice spa day for me it's like yeah, cold outside, yeah. my fireplace is on and i'm eating apples in the bathtub <laughs> tmi right. right too much of both yeah, no, but well, that's cool. But that's you know that that's the kind of stuff that that's like the uh, the, the the lifestyle yeah. the, uh, of, of transitioning to a rational lifestyle. You know, the value system changes. So instead of whatever the equivalent, so you know, sitting in the in the bathtub with like a chocolate bar and some <laughs> rose petals or something, it's yeah. like some apples and <laughs> you know oh, for sure you know. i mean that was around like i was doing that more so because in the beginning you know i, I would get really i guess morris would say that you have low thyroid function or whichever but while your body's healing sometimes like you have fluctuations in body temperature so i get quite cold in the past after eating and so i would get to the point where i just i had to get in the bath I'm, you know or i or i i knew that i would get cold so i just eat some fruit in mm. the bath and be comfortably satisfied <laughs> yeah 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 that's that's uh that's that because yeah because some folks that get into the real that real like stoic kind of staunch just i'm not <laughs> i'm not doing anything <laughs> you know i'm gonna this is this real austere type of life and i'm you know i'm i'm uh i'm not anti-technology i'm pro using technology to help heal yourself you know and to, and to heal the planet and we know enough you know we're we have enough intelligence and experience at this point to create the systems where we can maintain 
current lifestyle standard of life and not harm the planet. You know, mm -hmm. now we're going to have that part of what we're talking about where we, we create the environment. We're just going to have to do it and then share it with the world to show like oh, this, this is what it looks like. It can be done because talking about it's not going to really do a whole lot because no one, the, they, they, they've had this technology forever and the engineers know it, people know it, but there's no economic will to make any change because the folks that are <laughs> that are already rich, they don't want to not be rich anymore. So there, there's no incentive for them to make any changes to, uh, to anything. So, but, yeah. but yeah, now, uh, now do you, what's the, is there solar <laughs> laws that, down there? Are you able to get solar panels without problems or do they got like local ordinances where they're like, you're not allowed to have solar. I mean, I went off grid and had solar, uh, that must have been like seven years ago now. So I'm not mm. into, I don't have solar panels now, but um, actually just sold them to a guy about two years ago. They sat there for many years, but um, there didn't, I don't think there was any laws or anything. Um, okay. No, I just, there's some places around here in, in the U S where yeah, they, yeah, they, they, if you, yeah, they'll, they'll literally say that you're not allowed to have, like, solar panels on your house and you like you have to go into the grid you're not allowed to have your own or yeah. if you do have your own that still has to go into their grid and then they'll give you a kickback if you produce enough but they <laughs> they, they generally they put the amount that in order to get a kickback they, there's a threshold you have to do and it's so high that people would rarely get to that threshold so they won't get that kickback and yeah. so it's, 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 yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's, they'd have rainwater collection, um, restrictions, like you can't collect rainwater or like make a garden in your front yard. Like I've heard some crazy absurd things over the years. Yeah. Um, yeah. The system at large, it just always wants to pick on someone somewhere. Right. And then, yeah. See, it's kind of like social experiments for them. See what flies and what doesn't. And they just throw stuff at the wall and try and disrupt. And yeah. 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 Apple, yeah. <laughs> apples in the bathtub. Sounds like a novel. Perhaps your next book. I am trying to come up with the title for my next book. Cause I am, I've started writing it. <laughs> But I, well, I, I, well, I remember because when I first <laughs> saw you, I think everything was called uh, Apple Diaries. Yeah, that's my website, Apple Diaries. Yeah. And then I still I have got the apple in the cover here because, I mean, the apple is the one fruit that grows locally here that, you know, it was a big part of my life, big part of my transition too. you know, there's always the the baked apples, the raw apples, the applesauce, like I used apples, like they're just a huge part of everything. Yeah. It's the apple. And then the apple is just a, a universal symbol and no, everyone's confused by it, but I'm, I'm not. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, oh, wow. Oh, that's probably, yeah, that'd be, that wouldn't be nice. I just, I'd looked up, uh, I typed Dr. McDougal in, I see some videos. So I hadn't, I haven't, I haven't seen him in a while, you know. So I see, yeah, he's, he's yeah, a little, little, it's, little older, a little older. It's now. Very obvious, and it, it's sad to me. It really is because, like, um, when people develop such r rigid beliefs, and even if it's not working for them, they still just continue because it's all they know, and it's what they've been teaching, and you know, it's hard to come out of that. And say, yeah. yeah, well, I'm changing everything around now. Uh, new information has presented itself, and I realize starch is making me white, and it's causing me to degenerate quicker. Like, no, you can't do that. That would be yeah, yeah. To just he, you know, because I can look at him, and I can be like, all right, if he got off the starch, got into some sun. Yeah, because the know. rest of his diet's pretty good. I mean, he does advocate for the leafy greens. I mean, he does say minimal fruit, though, which kind of. And then some, you know, cooked yeah, that food. was the other thing where you have some of these, the, the anti fruit vegans is like, yeah, you know, well, and you know what, I've done a lot of thinking about this and I think I understand why 
there's these like Hippocrates, how they're only into the greens and things mm. is it's fermentation. But as Eric said, you'll always be confused by um, the the results that you're experiencing. If you still have waste in the body, right, you'll blame the fruit, but it's not the fruit's fault. It's just that you're fermenting your foods. And so it's creating these symptoms and you're blaming the fruit instead of your internal condition and learning how to transition properly or work right. with it. Right. But so these yeah. people are like huh. anti fruit because they feel bad when they eat fruit and, and, and right. that's, they're getting fermentation issues. So that's my take. Um, so they just go for the greens and they feel better and yeah, they're going to feel better, but still you shouldn't avoid like the healthiest food on the planet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now that's, that's an interesting, yeah, I think it's a good take has uh cause I, yeah, I had looked at it just sort of seemed like, yeah, the fruit there, you know, kind of along the lines of what you're saying, but it was just a, too aggressive for them where they were physiologically creating mm -hmm. negative symptoms. And so then they look at it like, oh, well, this is, this is bad. Let me you know, eat, eat nothing but, but vegetables. But, but even then I'm, that's still like where I guess they're if they're so that's almost like with that start with it's a little fruit, you're kind of getting st stimulant from the starch, you know, so they kind of get that, that complex carbohydrate high and uh, and then the vegetables. But man, that's that's just hard to, to conceive of when you've eaten fruit for so long. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> when you, you've experienced sort of the, the clean fruit high. Mm -hmm. uh, unobstructed without the because yeah as when you said that i'm like man i mean you you got to go way back and have a really filthy gut to have that those kind of symptoms of fruit well most um, of the people going to like hippocrates for example they're in the cancerous state they're just so acidic and so they eat some fruit probably they're just getting all sorts of symptoms and their blood sugars through the roof and, blah, and they're just a mess so they got to eat the greens and they advocate for the sprouts and just tons of greens and i can see why but then they're only gonna you know reach so far in terms of uh i have a chapter in my next book titled fermentation actually mm. where i get right into it because i i find it pretty fascinating the symptoms that arise from fermentation like somebody just said the flatulence somebody said wikipedia look up on a oh, i don't know what that says <laughs> but you will get flatulence <laughs> Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. Must must be. Yeah. Looks like my guys, they, they found some. Oh, well, there's my fruit shelf. I love that shelf. I still have it. Still nice use it. Nice little collection of sp spaghetti squash down here. Oh yeah, that was from the mm -hmm. garden. It's like uh, this shelf, this wicker fruit shelf is amazing because mm. your fruit can breathe and you can turn it over, you know, if you got papaya or like it's, yeah, it's a good fruit shelf. I still have that. <laughs> it's cool. I've never let it go. <laughs> yeah. It's how many would, you, so how many spaghetti squashes would you harvest in a year? Oh, those are really prolific. Like uh, when they grow, like if you have just even like five plants you can get like um and, and if you try and space them out so they mature at different times but i mean each plant can produce i don't know anywhere from three to eight or i don't i don't know like there's just always seems to be a lot of them <laughs> yeah yeah that's... squash is amazing i mean i used squash a lot during the transitional times for the first you know six seven years i was eating a lot of squash and greens and then fruit and yeah. Yep. Taken. I guess I did do a lot of media over the years. Your team dug up a lot of stuff. <laughs> yeah, they they <laughs> they find it if it's out there. They. <laughs> they yeah. They they find it. Well, I yeah, see you outside great. with the with the snow snow cap mountains in the back. Oh yeah, <laughs> eating the tropical fruits and the. But it gets really hot in uh, our area in the summer, and I'm loving it, right? Most people are using their air conditioning, and they're saying it's too hot, and they don't like it. And you can mm. tell, you know, a lot of the people that need this air conditioning and whatnot, and they like the colder climates because it makes them feel better because it gets back to fermentation and acidity. You're burning up inside. 
you're fermenting and so you the the cold helps to neutralize that and helps them to feel better is my take on it and so like i have yeah i mean air conditioning is a huge business out here for the summertime and that's the one thing i don't have don't want never used and i can't stand it (laughs) yeah because it doesn't i mean what's it getting the low 80s there i can't imagine it gets too much warmer than that does it i don't know the conversion but we get fahrenheit uh there's in my celsius we get to like 35 sometimes or 30 consistently um it, get, it gets pretty warm like we have our really hot months but then it's just like one extreme to the other then it's just you hit september and the river's yeah. cold and everything just starts cooling down and then i'm like oh no another eight months of cold till i can enjoy four months <laughs> yeah yeah that's a tropical dome greenhouse that they have in vancouver in the city and i go there in the winter and it's amazing they've got parrots and they've got different (laughs) fruit trees and but nobody eats it um yeah they just decorative fruit yeah decorative and i'm like (laughs) i would love to have a dome like this i would have a tree fort and i'd be eating all those figs but (laughs) <laughs> this is like a trip down memory lane. <laughs> <laughs> got some juice there. I think it was probably pure grape juice because I never got into the vegetables, you know, like mm. like juicing the starchy stuff or anything. I just wasn't into it, like carrots and beets, but definitely into the grapes. <laughs> That was Ted Carr a long time ago. Yeah. He, um, was that the, that was, that's the festival you were talking about? No, this is a different place. This is actually, oh, I think I thought something maybe fruit it festival. Is. It says fruit festival. I thought that this was at Veg Fest, though, mm. um, in Kelowna. And I just signed up actually to attend Veg Fest again. It's like this all vegan product kind of place you can go to. And I signed up to sell my books there and see how that goes in September. I'm pretty sure that's where it was, but because this is in a library at Canada Fruit say, Festival. Yeah. We were outside and we were, oh, because he was he was advertising his fruit festival. This was right before he was going to put it on. Okay. So he was in the library at Veg Fest advertising it and I came and met him and and uh, yeah. Yeah, he's he's changed a lot over the years. Have you followed him? I, I really haven't. Yeah, that, that's one one of the one of the folks I've seen a few a few of his things, mm-hmm. and uh, I think the first time I really saw something of his, he it was an interview he did at Dan McDonald like years ago, and then uh, then in the over the past couple of years, I think we I became friends on Facebook, and I've kind of seen some of the stuff he's been doing. Yeah, but, uh, but yeah, don't don't know too much about his work or recommendations or any any kind of details like that though. <laughs> yeah, that was a beauty. Nice and uh yeah, I see that, the, the, the uh, lemon collection back there. <laughs> Had some weight to that one. Yeah, that's <laughs> and then I cut into it and had a photo op <laughs> with it, <laughs> getting intimate with my food. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this was uh, Professor Arnold era. I was like, "Woo, look at this guy!" Oh uh, yeah, like one of just was where was he at an event, or is he just out somewhere that you were just walking uh, past and he had that? No, no, this was actually I was friends with him on social media, I believe, and he actually got out there in his community, and this he had a stand and he had all this going on, and I was like, "That's so cool! I'm gonna post that, <laughs> repost it." Yeah. Yeah, it's just more people out there spreading the word. Yeah, yeah, because I think I'd I'd seen that like a while ago, or I I might have seen it from you. I might have seen when you posted it. Maybe that's maybe maybe where I saw that because I remember seeing that, seeing this, and that was kind of that meme was going around for a while. You know, the research, Doctor Sabi, Arnold Eret, and and yeah, Morris. 
Yeah, anyone can benefit from any of that info. This isn't worth anything. <laughs> it was in my Thermomix days. My mother. This looks further. Is this further back? Uh, yeah, and it was when I was like, I got forced into selling this Thermomix. It, it's just a nightmare. I was, just, like, <laughs> I was trying to make it work with what I believed in and did in life. Uh -huh. but it's like you know, because the thing like creates recipes for you and walks you through them but really all i ended up using it for was like a food processor and a blender <laughs> and it's like very expensive and so somebody gifted it to me and then one of the conditions of the gift was that if i could sell three or four of them then i would then that person would have had to pay the couple thousand dollars for it mm. so i was under pressure it was a gift from a family mm. member, but she was like, but if you could sell it, then I don't have to pay for it. And so I gave it a shot, but it just was all wrong. And I just, <laughs> I just couldn't handle it. I had to stop and I was like, sorry, you have to pay for it. You gifted it to me. I don't know what to say. Yeah, like, I yeah. to sell any. Who's going to buy a $2,000? Like, yeah. I mean, I mean, what does it, is it a steamer? What is it? What, like an air it fryer? Does. Like, what is it? It does do everything, but so it's got all these, what you can do is it's, it's a smart device and it's connected to the internet. And now I don't have a subscription for mine at home. So all I can use it for is non-subscription stuff. Like I could use it as um, a, a, a blender, like I said, or a food processor. But when I was on subscription, you can look up any recipe and it'll tell you the recipe and it'll walk you through the recipe. It'll say, pancakes two cups of flour and then it'll weigh mm. it out for you in the bowl so they make it really easy it's for people that are almost like uh having issues like and they can't cook or whichever because mm. they have health issues because of all their cooking wrong foods or something but yeah well i see they got like <laughs> a screen on it but this is yeah this is one of these where it's too too much <laughs> too much yeah. stuff going on can we get rid of that? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> get back to <laughs> Oh boy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I guess there's just so much that we could uh, go on about. I just wouldn't even know where to <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, we'll uh yeah, gonna what's JC say? Instagram and it looked oh <laughs> JC I guess we is that he he collected a lot of the a lot of the images he um, said I guess the thermomix it looked like yeah you were, <laughs> that you were really trying to sell it I guess I was really trying because I felt bad she spent two twenty two hundred dollars on it and then she was just like we'll just try and sell them and I was like okay this could be good I mean there's some vegan recipes in here and there's some kind of transitional stuff and it's a good it's as good as a vita mix but i just couldn't sell it nobody wanted to buy it right. I mean, and so yeah it was just a nightmare and i'm glad i don't have to go through that anymore now it sits on my counter and i use it for the odd thing but mm. yeah it's an in interesting and then now are these is a couple were these f people you worked with or folks that you had seen their story where they had uh, yeah them? yeah this was a, a transformational story so sometimes i post like befores and afters on on the diet so um these are from a long time ago though mm. it's hard to remember <laughs> right but yeah i haven't seen her for a while but she had an amazing transformation as well um I was creating a, an ebook titled The Beauty of Fruit, but the lady I was working with kind of, I don't know what's happened. We've lost communication. We were working on it, and, but mm -hmm. um, she's included in, in that ebook as well as mm -hmm. you are and others. So hopefully it comes out at some point. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, these are just all befores and afters. This one, nobody believed that it was the same person. Mm. Um, they thought it was a mother and daughter and I got a lot of flack for that, but I, I've spoke with her and, you know, and I'm, I'm fairly, 
to the best of my ability, fairly certain that this is not a lie. This was a transformation, but yeah yeah no and i can see and, and those of us that are in this space we can tell looking at it you know i can because we've seen it over and over again the the way the skin changes you know yeah if you're uh you know if you're if you're real skinny you're going to get some natural weight you know if you're bigger you go come down a little bit you know yeah it's darker yeah most definitely this is Tani Ra. So her eyes actually changed from brown to blue and became wider and more, you know, vibrant and lost the mucus in the face and the jowl area. And she had an amazing transformation. So, yeah, I remember. Yeah, I remember her. I think I remember seeing that when that came, came past back in the, back in the day. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so well, this has been an amazing discussion, and uh, I agree. So happy to have you here. And why don't you give all of your how everybody can get a hold of you, and uh, where they can go to get your book and to get a hold of you and to plug in. All right. So I'm on Facebook and Instagram and Telegram. Those are the three uh, socials that I do post on, and um, I can send links or you can just find me mariah heal thyself i've got a website applediaries.com pretty easy to remember and then uh yeah my my first book i'm i'm very proud of this and i i want to thank you again professor spear because i've always meant to kind of connect and talk to you i mean i think we did like a long time ago i was asking you a few questions that was a long time ago um just on messenger but you know you've been like a inspiration and like a solid voice in the health community because you're not deviating or changing your like um the knowledge is it is what it is the the truth is the truth and and so i you know it's just good that you're staying uh true to your word and it's refreshing in this crazy world but yeah, so you can find my book on Amazon, or if you don't have access to Amazon, I will personally mail you a book if you just send me a message. Um, but it might cost a little more because of the shipping and whatnot. But yeah, so I guess that's about it. Um, and yeah, it's been a pleasure to talk to you and to connect. Yeah, yeah, thank you so much. And everybody, yeah, down below, we'll have yeah, some of your links down yeah. there. And uh, yeah, I posted the uh, your books. Everybody can go check that out. And uh, and yeah, yeah, it's been it's been a pleasure. And uh, yeah, like I said, it's been a, it was an honor you know, writing that article for the book. And yeah. uh, things turned out really really well. And uh, yeah, definitely enjoyed reading through it. And uh, and yeah, yeah. So awesome. keep, keep doing what you're doing. Definitely. Thank you. You too. Thank you so much for just helping other people <laughs> most definitely and uh yeah and everybody uh yeah go down below again hit the like button subscribe and share this video as well as uh doing another live training session on tuesday at 1 p.m so sign up for that to have because i don't always do them live so this would be an opportunity to come and talk with me doing the, the q a and all that kind of stuff at the end so definitely sign up for that but uh but yeah as always transition that's our word and that's our concept they can't take it and uh i will defend that word and uh but yeah, i'll help yeah. you i'm your backup <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so, uh, so, all right, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. And until next time, peace, love, and breath. We are mucus free. We are mucus free. We are mucus free. We are milk and 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 free.